game number one, Gajamata versus Gregory the Seventh. Let's go. Sick. Let's do it. All right. So, I mean, there's been some heavy speculation so far, as there always are in Hidden Cups, on who these players are. But we know they've got some banger civilizations here to start it all off. We've got the Cumans for Gajamata. We've got the Burgundians for Gregory the Seventh. And we have uh, one of many Hidden Cup exclusive maps, uh, Bypass here. Now, the way Bypass works is you have an opening through the middle. So a uh, normal hideout or arena, for example, you start with walls, but it's harder to be aggressive if you wish to. Uh, here on this map, there's that opening directly through the middle. Either player could, could walk right through their gate and start to batter down those walls. Uh, and so the option is there, but of course there's plenty of reason to also be on the outside. And the outside has plenty of food, plenty of stone, and plenty of gold. And honestly, I think some of the best games here come when one player is pushing through the middle and the other player then retreats around to the outside. But uh, I'm going to start it off with this, Orin Lu. I think the Cumans, you kind of know that they are going to aim for that second TC. Um, where do you build it on this map? Can you build it on the side, maybe? That would be pretty bold, because if you want a perfectly efficient economy uh, with your typical uptime with uh, Cumans, you usually want to build yeah. it with seven or eight villagers. And sending seven or eight villagers all the way around to the side of the map feels a little excessive. It also kind of opens yeah. you up to just a fast castle and forward siege and whatnot. But I do think yep. that just being Cumans in itself already sort of puts a little bit of pressure on Gregory the Seventh. I, in my opinion, no other sim in the game forces your opponent to just bend their strategy than having to deal with the Cuban boom, even if you're a really strong eco civ like Burgundians. Spot on. Yeah, and it, you know, it's interesting. I, I On the flip side of that, if there was maybe, oh man, Ostrich is trolling Gregory here, but if there was maybe <laughs> one player or one civ that I have seen actually catch up when it comes to the economic aspect of the Cuban 2 TC boom, it might be the Burgundians on the 3 TC boom. But that means you're not applying any pressure and the Cumans are always going to come with something at some point. So I'm with you. I think that the the Burgundian player probably wanted a boomy, chill game and is looking at Cumans right now and being like, oh man, why did I not ban that? <laughs> Oh, that's what I would do if I face Cumans in any given draft. But yeah, I mean, th th the big question is really, what do you want to do with Burgundians? Because they're not your typical aggression sieve. Their best units, cavalry, gunpowder, halbs, those all take a long time to tech into and are units you want to make with a big economy. You want to spam them all over the place. They're not especially yeah. uh, efficient in terms of preserving their, uh, their lives over a long time. So it, we'll have to see how aggressive Gregory wants to take this. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe a strategy here, because the Cumans can't stonewall themselves. Maybe a strategy here, um, if you wanted to boom if you're Gregory, is actually just to stonewall the middle area. And if you get uh, like two tiles of stone walls, I know the Cumans have capped ram and whatnot, but could delay some type of push there. Now, one thing I wanted to remind people of is you cannot build where the corpses are, that sandy area in the middle there. So um, you can build around that next to the walls, but you cannot actually castle drop the middle easily. Uh, I think if you could do that, going castle drop would be the most common strategy on the map. Oh, for sure. And castle drops can still be quite strong if you fought, if you use a some sort of siege push before it and then drop the castle like where your opponent's palisades are. But yeah, yeah the yeah. quicksand in the middle of the map, you can't build on it. But I still think the as we have the 19 pop-up time here for Gajamata, all very normal stuff with humans. After the 2TC boom, how do you want to play things as humans, right? Because you kind of have two different directions to go in. Do you add in a bunch more TCs and go for a more cavalry-heavy yep. approach? Or do you just want to go for a fast imp castle drop and use Kipchoks against Burgundians who don't really have great ranged options? Yeah, it's tricky. I think Kipchak is really strong. I, I, there's been this debate, though, over the years. You know, Dave, who's going to join eventually for Hidden Cup 5, he has he abhors the Kipchak. He hates the Kipchak. He thinks it's the weakest unit ever. I take the more, you know, mediocre approach of really cheap unit, really strong for what it is, and it suits the human timings. Um, but the, what I, where I feel the kip check is, is strong is in the castle push forward situation. And I do wonder if that's going to be possible here if you can't build the castle in the sand. Because you could argue, like, it's going to be really important to have control of the sides. And if you, 
If you're going to need to control multiple areas, I think that's where you might want knights or step lancers uh, that you can kind of split up instead of the more common range unit, the Kipchak. Yeah, I mean, the thing with Kipchaks is that they are a cheap and generally weak cav archer, so they're really bad if you're trying to tech into them because you still have to train them from the castle. It's kind of slow to get going. So if you're going for something and then Kipchaks, usually it's a very weak and slow switch. But as you were saying, yeah, T90, yeah. if you're going for the Kipchaks preemptively, you start to build those numbers earlier. That's when the unit can look so strong. But it's it's a very polarizing unit depending on the situation you find them in. Okay, Ornlu, so we've seen enough sets now. You've been covering the games. I'm just going to say a player, and I want a yes or no, and if you think we've seen them. Can I put you on the spot with that? Go for it, man. Okay, I'm going to give you a softball. MBL? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, MBL. Uh, Hera? No. There's my hot take. Okay. All right, all right. And then uh, the Viper? No. Okay, interesting. All right, well, you know, a player who might be in the conversation with the final two there, uh, Tato has always been in love with his human 2TC boom and Tower Rush. I would say Tato and then also Yo are the two that I recall doing that the most. And that's what this is here for Gajimata. So the two town centers are up producing vills, but then some of those vills are going forward and they're building a tower in this middle region. Yeah, this is a really interesting strategy, and as you're saying, it's one that we've seen Tato do plenty of times. So the idea behind this, guys, is you go for the forward tower and try and use this to keep your opponent in the Feudal Age, because if you're both in Feudal Age, humans will have a better eco than everybody because you've got that second TC working. Whereas, especially for a civ like Burgundians, you have that strong economy. If they can get up the castle quickly and just add extra TCs themselves, then humans aren't going to yep. find themselves with the degree of an eco advantage that they generally look for. Yeah, this, and this is just something that is so annoying if you're Gregory, because you're already thinking, he's getting ahead, he's getting ahead, I need to rush the castle. And this isn't cheap. I mean, the blacksmith in the market was going to happen anyways, the houses certainly aren't going to hurt, but this is not something that he wanted to deal with. The, having said that, I do feel like the, the reaction from Gregory has been really smooth. We've got an immediate counter tower, that's prepped and that's up. The house foundation should keep the opponent away. And he is at least inching closer to Castle Age. But I really like Gajimata's opening. I think this just gives you like an extra minute or two of time when it comes to that eventual push from Gregory the Seventh. At the very least, you forced out Loom from your opponent. You might have to use the market a little bit, although it's pretty close to clicking up to Castle Age organically. But you forced that tower, which means maybe Gregory the Seventh has to go on to stone that he otherwise didn't want to do. And yeah, there you go. Yeah. My two bills on the mining camp on stone. If you're trying to go for just the most pure boom approach, that is actually a little bit of a pain. And yes, you <laughs> having those little differences in okay, maybe my boom isn't as efficient, matters so much against humans because you need to have that picture-perfect economy to keep up with them. Look at the tower. That tower, it it <laughs> almost feels very campaign-esque, right? Where it's, you know, I guess if he moved it back next to the wall, it would look a bit better. But just another tower to hold control over the area. Uh, Gregory's going to drop a stable here. He's getting the Castle Jico upgrades now on the cheap and an age earlier with the Burgundians. So I, I don't think Gregory is going to be massively concerned right now. But honestly, man, like I'm seeing why humans were banned so much. I, I, the Vil count's insane for Gajimata right now. Yeah, it is just pretty ridiculous. Right now, Gajabata has two TCs constantly churning out villagers. Gregory the Seventh has zero because his TC is currently working on Castle Age. Now, once you get to Castle Age, add those extra TCs, you will catch up, but it's just you're front-loading so many extra resources as Gajamata. And since you're pointing out the campaigns, I do just want to say that Gajamata is playing the campaign correct color as you play red in the Gajamata campaign, whereas Gregory the Seventh uh, doesn't appear in any of them, so it doesn't okay. matter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also, um, if... People are thinking Tato, because this is a strategy I think of when we think Tato. Tato is known for picking red more than any other color in tournaments other than Hidden Cup. <laughs> um, he, did, he did go like gray and blue, and he did also do red 50% of the time, but it's not like a sure thing, of course, to speculate on. But 52 vils against 30 right now. Siege Workshop's going to come up for Gregory, and this is going to be Knights and Siege. And this is where the human player needs to find a way to just 
delay this push as much as possible and try and get up to the castle age. And that can be something that's pretty tricky to do, because as you were saying earlier, humans don't get stone walls. Yeah, your palisade walls are a bit tankier, but that doesn't really matter too much versus mangonels. And the rush distance being so short, it was nice in applying the early pressure as Gajamata, but suddenly you could find yourself on the back foot. Yeah, you're pretty close to clicking up to Castle Age, but you're not really there quite yet, and it's still going to be another two plus minutes before you even can think about adding in your own mangonels. That was really interesting there. Gregory pulled Vils to repair the blacksmith so it wouldn't go down, knowing the siege was going to be here. I mean, a lot of players there might just be like, crap, I mistimed that. You don't really think about villagers against the blacksmith that frequently, but he deletes his house. Here he comes, and Gajamata must be concerned because it is just feudal age right now for Gajamata. And Gajamata wanted to build another tower, wanted to leave with the villagers, and that's not happening. And for all the positives we could say about this play, for, for Gajamata, at the same time, I'm really impressed with how smooth Gregory is smacking this away. And villagers will die, the towers will go down, and then the TCs could be for the taking next. Yeah, Gregory the Seventh smacking away Gajamata as if he was Henry the Fourth, man. Absolutely no fear <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> I actually, I uh, actually as a fellow know history nerd with reference. Riley, I, I do appreciate these segments. <laughs> yes, I actually know the reference because I just watched the video. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that tower's yeah, going to go down. It's a great defense so far, though, and and well, that even trying to go with another tower here, it's just like everything you can do to buy just that little bit of extra time. Yeah, Gregory uh, did just after I saw two people in my chat say. Uh, these guys are both top five. Gregory did kill uh, two of his own villagers there, but, uh, you know, he's focused on some other things. He has still killed villagers. He's still pushing out across the map, starting to get relics on the outside. Third TC now coming up, and the human player is unable to go for a castle because of all the tower defense here. So it's going to be stable units, and the Burgundians can compete in that department. Absolutely. Humans do have access to camels, though, so at the very least, you can use that to stabilize. And if we're thinking about, was this a success? Gajamata did end up losing four villagers and all of that. At the same time, I mean, look at the TC count just now getting to three for Gregory the Seventh. He's still yeah, behind yeah. by 20 villagers, and that's a 50% difference. And you just add your own third TC at this point, Gajamata. No problem whatsoever. Gajamata sniping that. I mean, that is... Listen, you, that siege push could be coming to your base right now. You're expanding to the third town center. You're making more army. You're getting all these techs. To use your starting scout that effectively is extremely high level stuff. I love that from Gajamata. He, he, of course, has a crazy build lead. But then also, I love the stone wall from Gregory because that prevent another monk went down. What in the world? Uh, the stone wall in the middle, uh to finish my thought, does prevent an attack coming through there. Oh yeah, I mean, this already has the makings of two really good players. I mean, obviously everyone in this tournament is like a top 20 player, but these guys yeah. are on point with their play so far. You got Husbandry in for Gregory the Seventh. That's going to be an important upgrade to prioritize because humans get it essentially for free at this stage. But mm -hmm. Gajamata himself also he keeps up in his eco upgrades and he is just going to maintain that eco advantage as humans which is going to be so important because their tech tree i think would you could agree is generally worse than burgundians got some lancers here the lancer the, the player who made lancers meta at the high level his name is tato he did that with the uh tatars against the aztecs and red bull wolo legacy finals against leary i was there I remember being so pumped to see that these days not really a tell to see a couple Lancers. They are really nice to have mixed into the army, especially with the human speed. But fourth TC for Gajamata going to be on the side here, Orlu. So he's really looking to expand. And for all we said about Gregory losing monks, he did get three relics already. Yeah, that's pretty sick. I mean, Burgundians get the extra relic bonus. You have the food income as well as the gold income. And something that Burgundians will always have going for them is thanks to the relic bonus as well as the Burgundian Vineyard's unique tech, in a long game, Burgundians actually have a better eco than humans because once you sort of peter off with the, uh, the extra TCs, that doesn't really matter in the long game. So if Burgundians can just stall things out, that's going to be to their advantage. But you still have around a 2,000 resources collected deficit you need to overcome. Yeah, yeah, and, and Gajamata is doing such a good job investing these resources all the time. <coughs> I mean, resources are starting to float a little bit,
But it wouldn't surprise me if we see more and more Lancers, more and more Knights, and just flood the map. Because if you can hold both side areas, you are going to have full Golden Stone control there. That's got to be the key. Absolutely. You need to make sure that you're checking to see exactly where your opponent is going because you sort of have three lanes on this map, right? You have the middle passage and then the either side. Now, both of these civs have great cavalry, so it's a bit easier to sort of bounce between the different locations. But now we have the siege workshop coming in from Gajamata. So clearly he wants to make something happen. And with this late Castle Age eco advantage for our red player, that is going to be tough for Gregory to stop, even if he already has Burgundian Cavalier. I am... I guess got some chills. Like, I'm feeling the level here. Like, again, like you said, everyone's so good. Maybe you should get a blanket. But the then. awareness. <laughs> well, I, I have one right next to me. <laughs> you know, the, the level is amazing. The reactions from both of them, just fantastic here. Obviously, Gajamata with a big lead. But Gregory hasn't taken many more losses. Gregory now comes over here, gets a snipe. Lycav now moves in for a monk. Like, this is pretty flawless unit control from both players so far. Yeah, it's really hard to complain with how either of these guys are approaching this. It does feel like Gajamata is the one who's dictating the pace of the game and Gregory is reacting. But still, those reactions are basically perfect. Blue can now afford a castle. He's going to put one up over there on the west side or the south side, I guess, of the map. That's going to be away yeah. from the opponent's siege workshop. But at the very least, it's going to sort of zone off the portion of the map that Gajamata can attack. And if you can take these straight up fights with Cavalier and Monks and maybe some Spearmen, that's where you can do well versus humans. The Siege is a surprise, though. The Siege is a surprise. He didn't know about it, but he reacts to it. And that is the second time Gregory is locked in on a bunch of units. A big fight there. Gregory has to pull away as well. And Gajamata's eco lead is just insane right now. He will lose the Siege. Beautiful job there from Gregory, which means he can hold this area. He's still pulling away here with his mobility. And he will likely get some conversions. No way. Like have going in. He won't get the conversions. Beautiful play from Gajamata. But the siege goes down, Orin Lu, and I, I feel like if Gregory could get that castle up, well, actually, on second thought, oh my god, he's 40 villagers behind right now. Yeah, you guys wonder why humans are banned all the time. This is why. It's just this a it. very yeah. unfortunate Civ to play against in a, these sorts of closed map situations. Imperial Age on the way here for Gajamata. Gregory's done a great job of stalling and buying time. But how far is that really going to get you if your opponent starts having access to trebuchets? Now, something that is going mm -hmm. in favor of Gregory the Seventh is humans are the only camel civ that don't have heavy camel. So that isn't something that's going to scale all that well into the Imperial Age for Gajamata. Yeah, that's that's a fair point here. Yeah, and I think maybe that is okay for Gajamata. As long as he's able to protect a good position to get a castle down. I'm just noticing he saw the castle there from Gregory. Wouldn't surprise me at all to see villagers headed out that way. I mean, the activity from Gajamata is pretty ridiculous here, man. And we haven't even looked at, like, how quickly he's expanding his eco. We, we've pretty much just assumed these things with him, but he's everywhere. He's, he's left side, he's right side. He started off at home, and he's chasing those Cavalier all around the map right now. Absolutely. Now... We still have Gregory the Seventh on the way to the Imperial Age. Yeah, he's only on 84 vills, but it's all about buying time for him. You can get Paladin as soon as you hit Imp with Burgundians. They, it is a half-price tech. He's expanding out to the side. And if you're just playing the stall game as Burgundians, you are pretty well set up to do that because at the very least, Gajamata can't have a forward castle. So you're not getting trebbed yeah. down right away. Yeah, and you do have, right now, you do have enough gold to work with. You will eventually run out if, if the position stays like it is. But you have the three relics, you have continuous resource income. And I think, I mean, if humans had heavy camel, I would think this is impossible for Gregory. But with instant paladin click, going up against mainly camel that can't be upgraded in him, I actually think that Gregory has a real solid shot with 30 or so paladin. Absolutely. And it is going to be that Cavalier switch incoming for Gajamata. Humans do have fully upgraded Paladins that also move a little bit faster. So the Paladin quality is actually going to be a little bit higher in the end. We'll have to see, though, can you actually make a fight happen before Gregory starts to develop his own tech switch? Also, the numbers are still pretty good for Gregory. It's still going to be a tough hold, though, because that resource collected difference is just absolutely astounding at this stage. Yeah, I, I, I do wonder if Halb makes the most sense on paper. I, I know that at this point, if you're such a big eco lead, you can maybe just say, ah, screw it, you know, and, and go for the option he's going for here. But we'll see. 
if there's any regret for Gajamata, it might be going for Cavalier against what will be Paladin, but still 40 Villager lead. It feels like Gajamata could probably do Cavalier and Halb. And actually, hold on a second. Gajamata is going to click Paladin as well. Just paying the full price for it here, huh? Wow, that's crazy. Oh, he's got rich man problems right there. His own numbers are climbing. He's only at 18 to 22, so that's a very small deficit. And having more resources collected, this is no problem. That castle is being denied for the time being. And I can't help but agree, how feels essential. It's the only way you can take fights with the worse economies. If your units are just significantly more efficient than what your opponent is doing, and Halbs versus Cavalry is probably the most obvious way you can go about that, especially as Burgundians here. Okay, so there is, and this is a stretch, but there is a 20 second window for Gregory <laughs> where he <laughs> can have Paladin and his opponent does not. So here his castle's getting denied. Most of his Cavalier over here is being tread pushed on the other side. But in a minute, that window will open just ever so slightly. But man, oh man, I mean, it's just, it's just non-stop from Gajimata. He's on the left-hand side. He's got Cavalier on the repair villagers there. Desperation from Gregory, who's running out of gold. Hasn't tech switched at all. He hasn't had the time to even think about it. 150 bills now for Gajimata. And the camels are doing well enough there. And this feels inevitable, Orinlu. I mean, even before we see Paladin come in. Absolutely. I mean, you're going to take the best fight you possibly can, but it's still just before Paladin is in. I'm looking at around a 50 pop difference at this point. You're about to have the quantity and quality advantage here as Gajamata. He's got more map control. As you're saying, the gold is going to be a bit of an issue. It's just difficult to sustain Paladins uh, for any amount of time unless you have a really strong economy. You're going to try and delay things a little bit more. It's what has kept Gregory in this game, but right now that castle's going to go down as there is just no stone to repair it. Yeah, and, and and now you see your opponent has Paladin too, and well, your opponent actually has Superior Paladin. So best of luck with that. Uh, you know, the three relics makes you hope if you're Gregory the Seventh here, but Gregory the Seventh first game in the series, and you don't know who your opponent is in this tournament. Gregory the Seventh is probably has this big feeling of oh no, <laughs> like oh no, who is this? Who is up against me right now? Yeah, I mean, this has just been basically perfect execution from Gajamata. And it's not just, oh, I'm just piloting humans and this is just like a Civ win. The amount of unit movement he had with his light cab in the mid game, delaying things with the Tower Rush and Feudal Age, I mean, this is playing the Civ to about as close to perfect yeah. as possible. Now you're charging in with around 40 fully upgraded human paladins. And uh, yeah, you're not really stopping that at this point, is Gregory? Even even early guilds right now, there's not many players that do that. I I, I'm really feeling the Tato vibes. It's hard not to when the Cubans yeah. are played that perfectly. Gajamata wins game number one. And Gregory the Seventh, I'll be honest, didn't make many mistakes. I think if both players play to their max level, the Cubans usually are going to have a bit of an edge there. Gajamata just took every edge he could get there and ran with it. The Tower Rush, the two TCs, and just he just exploded in Castle Age to win game number one. Absolutely. I mean, almost double the gold collected for Kajamata. That makes a lot of Paladins. Just having that uh, timing advantage with Imperial Age, even by a little bit. I mean, it's, again, it's you're, like you're saying, Gregory's not making many mistakes. It's just, if yes. you're in this sort of situation, you could argue that just giving your opponent humans on a map where you were walled at the start is already playing at a disadvantage. Game two coming up. And what will Gregory pick? I hope it's evacuation. And this is precisely what I wanted to see here. And precisely what I did not expect from Gregory, the player who, who lost. He goes for the gods here of all civilizations. And Ornlu, right off the bat, before we can even talk about the lack <laughs> of wood on this map, I do have to point out the fact that there is that boar on the shoreline. And the players... I've been some players, we've seen two players go get that boar with a scout. I can't help but feel like with the goths, that hunt out there, with the hunt lasting longer, that could be very important. Oh, for sure. Just getting that extra food, getting that early lead. We've seen that be a major factor for these players on this map. And what are you doing there, Mrs. Lady? You've got a forward villager quite early on. Goths Ooh. very much known as the laming sieve. And Georgians themselves, they start with 50 less food they're a bit more vulnerable to these sorts of early pressures than most civs out there. Yeah, so I wonder if Gregory's just sending the villagers directly to disrupt the food in some way. 
Uh, kind of a little history of the map. Originally, we had the rhinos on the front in some of our test versions. And I told the players, pretend like it's the most important game of your life when they play. And guess what? All my rhinos were stolen. Everything was <laughs> lamed. But we never really had someone go to the other area. It seems like Gregory has found this rhino. And Gregory is not happy about how good the economy was from Gajimata in the first game. And hold on a second. I thought we saw the Master Boar Lamer in the previous series. This is a very quick lame. And will he kill it with the scout? Oh, this is he not somebody who's a stranger to lame. Scout. Wow. Okay, so to explain that, if a villager kills a rhino, you could still take the food from it. You just have to walk over there. But players who are really good at it will get the timing right. So they're, if their scout kills it, if military kills it, then it cannot be taken at all. And now there's a villager here, and Gajamata doesn't know about any of this. And can Gajamata quick wall? Gajamata gets the all quick right. wall down. Oh, man. Oh, the, wait. Enough, enough HP there. That villager is having a rough time. No loom, no fun. And right now, just a nice little bit of a block on the scout. There shouldn't be any way this villager survives. <gasps> and uh, Gregory the Seventh clearly decided that uh, Gajamata was not allowed to have fun this game. Yeah, seriously, that's exactly what this is. It's like you are going to have the worst freaking time because you decided to pick humans, right? Beautiful play from Gregory. So now you're a vill up. There's our villager, villagers boxing slow-mo. Uh, you're a villager up. You're a rhino up. The goths also receive more hunts uh, or more food from their hunt. It lasts a little bit longer. And suddenly you don't feel so bad about wandering around with a villager, which I think in some sometimes when you do this, Ornlu, if you don't find the reward, you really feel the fact that your villager has not been collecting resources. I would say that for most people, but the fact that you went for the last hit with the scout, like Gregory knows what they're doing. You know, you send that villager <laughs> forward. There, there's guaranteed loss, but you're going to find a way to guarantee some I think damage. Gajamata is looking for that boar. Gajamata is looking for that boar knowing it's there. These guys know their stuff about the map. And now Gajamata is again probably like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, he definitely wants to take that boar, and Gregory's not going to let that happen. Wow. Absolutely not. That villager is running off into the wilderness all by her lonesome, and that's not what you're doing. All of those deer have been lamed. And, I mean, as far as things go, Gajamad has been doing a good job of minimizing idle time, but this is still not at all the start you're looking for, especially because Georgians, mm -hmm. they're not really a sieve that have many bonuses going for them until you start making your uh, Manaspa. <laughs> And can can you palisade the there? Or does, it was, it was I, definitely I blocked, blocked, by, the blocked the by the deer carcass. Yeah, it was definitely <laughs> blocked by the deer carcass. He has to reposition. I'd be really impressed if here he's able to kill it with the scout. I think you just are happy with it to die there. Yeah. And as we have some stats fly on screen, I mean, the thing we haven't gotten a chance to talk about is why you picked the Georgians. And that would be the mule cart, which could be really effective because you can drop off the hunt and the wood at the mule cart but i mean and for now it's just fishing ships and what's left of the sheep there and cows for gajamata and this has been an aggressive scrappy start to game number two. Oh yeah it has been a lot of fun and i gotta say so far i'm liking this map a lot it's played out very differently the few times i've seen it as players are even going for docks at very different times which is really unusual for a hybrid map you usually just want to get that down as quickly as possible so yep. even though all of that laming happened, there's still more fishing ships for Gajamata, and that's going to help bolster his food eco and keep him at least more smoothly going into the mid game than he otherwise would be. Yeah, I think due to the lack of wood on the mainland or on the like starting island, it's now more of a question instead of a guarantee of if going for fishing ships is worth it, right? I think on other maps where you just have so much wood, it's like, yeah, of course, I have to add fishing ships or I'd be stupid not to. But now it's like, you invest wood into a couple extra fishing ships, you're exposed. You know, you could have some real problems here. So as we see both players send villagers off to the the green land, uh, or the mainland, I've been calling it, um, we'll see what the focus now is here. Because again, in, in my preparation for, for this map and this event, I had some strats built solely around denying this wood. Because everyone comes here for wood or that food. And so you can lose your fish, if you could get, say, like three villager kills with man at arms, maybe fast archers to that area. 
Well, speaking of men at arms, that is a forward barracks, and we have some militia incoming here. Gregory the Seventh has felt that it has been too long since Gajamada's life has been made miserable. So let's just come back in here again <laughs> with some more swordsmen. This You'll be able to pick up men at arms once it gets energy. a little bit more gold. <laughs> oh man, this is and this is definitely something that only certain types of players like to do, right? Like this this could possibly narrow it down and thankfully you can move you could bring the mule cart with you here if you're gajamata and just find some other trees here but when you see your opponents in feudal age for a certain amount of time you know man at arm is coming in and he's got to be careful is he actually going back to the wood next to the barracks that's wild uh... he's just gonna chop wood next to the barracks for now well, I guess so long as you're chopping wood, you just want to go to the, the closest possible location to minimize your villager idle time. Yeah. Looks like the vills on gold have been walled in. Of course, the goth men at arms are going to take down the extraneous houses pretty quickly. And behind all of this, Gajamata is going for some fire ships. So he's going to at least have a better chance than his opponent to win control of water and keep those five fishing ships afloat. How is Gajamata not dead? Villager down, rhino down. Uh... At this point, like fighting back on water, builds the tower there, defends from the man-at-arms. Gajamata, we said the same with Gregory in the first game when Gregory was behind, how impressed we were. I am equally as impressed with Gajamata. Gajamata has had so many bad things thrown his way, and for now, he seems somewhat okay. Yeah, I mean, you look at somebody who had that good of execution in the previous game when things were going cleanly, able to adapt to a very messy game like this one. I mean, players yeah. that don't typically do super well in both situations relative to the other players at the top level, but Gajamata clearly comfortable in literally any situation you can throw at them. Gregory still being in a nuisance with all of those forward infantry units killing houses, but right now things are at least more or less even. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, Gajamata's double dock and consistently making fires. It is very likely Gajamata's five fishing ships will not be touched and that Gajamata will end up killing the fishing ships from Gregory here. Now, what Gregory is finding, though, is that there is very little resistance here on land to this infantry play. And that palisade wall goes down. And these villagers, they should be savable. They're, if this is noticed, I assume that Gajamata is distracted. Gajamata loses the vill and now wheels away as he's building a tower. And oh, my goodness. That was incredibly close. Well. Yeah, at least saves one of those villagers. The villager on the dock of Gregory's did go down. So we are at two kills to one economically in favor of Greg. And Double Bidax is just now incoming. And uh, I think that upgrade is in for Gajamata. I can't quite tell based on the color. It but is. Yep. that is going to be a, at it least... Is, yep. Okay, yeah. You need to catch up at least as far as that goes. Exactly. Nice job there from Gregory. Goes back in. Man, the infantry has just done wonders. Exactly. You know, there is a point where you do then think, should I go for something to kill the villagers on the mainland. Uh, in Gajamada's case, he's just going to use the starting scout. Now, people have been saying Viper for Gregory. If this is Viper, we will see a quick wall attempt. And that villager will not die. It's pretty weak. And, well, I mean, yeah. Gajamada hasn't really made him work for it, in all honesty. I think I could have maybe executed that wall. So <laughs> let's not jump oh, to Oh, come on, Tina. Let's not go overboard. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Casters are only supposed to say nice things about me. Okay, those are the rules. Oh, yeah, my, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I kid, man. Uh, but uh, uh, but also, I, mean, I hey, gotta point out, Gajamada making nice use of the scout regenerating HP, just poking at some bills and running out later. Ah, uh, that, that's true. Yeah, that scout will be as good as new. And also where the scout has been, right? The scout double-checked the docks. The scout saw some of the activity there on land in both areas. And I, right now, it feels like Castlage is going to come in for Gajamata. Like Gregory has not had a bad game at all. And it, I'm, again, just impressed with Gajamata's ability to survive. Gajamata adding more fishing ships now. This, I, I thought it was jumping to conclusions a little bit with the Cumans. Because humans are humans. But how Gajamata has played this is making me think this is a top five talent. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're only getting more information to reinforce that idea and not less information. Currently, five yeah. fire ships to four. Of course, it comes down to how these guys can take the fight. Nice job trying to get the concave there as Gajamata. And indeed, is going to be clicking Castle Age way sooner than his opponent. And super importantly for Georgians, he's got a lot of stone income. 
Yeah, and you know, the Georgians, they didn't really do that well during the qualifier. A lot of times players were just playing towards the Manaspa and not really able to either find other bonuses with the Georgians or utilize other bonuses with the Georgians. Here, we've seen the Mule Card have a massive effect. It has been much easier to just relocate villagers than with any other, with the Civ that didn't have a Mule Card, right? Um, and now you've got an eco lead because you have fishing economy and your opponent does not. And then, then you're also going to get the Manaspa. Like the Manaspa is a ridiculously strong unit. And on this map, how are you supposed to defend from Manaspa running in and out of your eco? It's going to be very difficult, if at all possible. It is just such a tough unit to stop. It's fast, it's strong, it's well armored, and it just snowballs even more over time. Goths, as far as stopping that goes, I mean, you can spam a lot of cheap pikemen, but if we're getting to the point when there's a lot of Manaspa on the field running all over the place, it should be quite tough for uh, oh, good, Greg. Good yeah. demo there from Greg, though. This is a big moment. It looked like Gajimata was maybe going to be able to defend. Gajimata distracted and won't necessarily lose every fishing ship here, but certainly could lose a couple. A lot of things to focus on here. I think Gajimata will realize that and rectify it, but... Now, Goths, they can go for Pikemen. We do have uh, Spears on the way right now for Gregory, so Pikemen upgrade could probably be in. at Scout. I feel like every time we look over at Gregory's base, it's moving around here for Gajimata. Oh, yeah, that is plenty of doing, and there it is, the castle right at home. It is on the cracked terrain, notably, in case there's any sort of Castle Age push shenanigans. But yep. right now, it is just Gajimata laser-focused on getting to his unique unit and playing that more... Okay, it doesn't really matter what you do, because so long as I get to my Manaspa mass, I am going to be cruising this game. Gajimata wants to know where those villagers went. He is looking for those vills. He is very, he's wondering, where are the villagers? I saw them on the berries there. They're not here right now. Maybe catches a glimpse of that one, but that is likely going to be a TC. Gregory's going to drop a TC immediately, probably on the wood line in the berries. And here come the Manaspa now. So pikes need, need to be out there. I'd be very fitting for Gregory the Seventh to maybe make a monk at some point to maybe get conversions. There's the TC. Scout goes down. Manaspa coming to the main eco where there's another TC. And <laughs> we need all hands on deck here in defense <laughs> against this unit. It produces quickly. And it could kill Gregory's villagers very quickly with how exposed things are around this base. Yeah, that's going to be quite tough. Georgians, of course, a great defensive sieve themselves. Got that fortified church. You can just garrison the vills in. They'll fire some arrows. There's been at arms. A little bit awkward trying to do some damage. And right now, it is. it feels like Gajamata, despite a rocky early game, he's getting to where he wants to be at this point. Yeah. I will say, with the, with the Goths, there's... Oh, what a snipe there from Gajamata. Weak villager on a farm and noticed it. Now, I will say, Jeez. though, Gregory recognizes that the fish boom is a problem and has been looping in random fires to kill the fish. So a lot of the fish is going down. And it's going to be a 4TC boom from the Goths here. And Goths on 4TCs can be incredibly strong. Now, not so strong if you're losing villagers underneath that TC. Uh, that's not good. But, yeah, there's a monk there. Gregory forces a delete at least, kills the other Manaspa. And I, I'm thinking about the tech tree. I think I think Goths might be superior in the Imperial Age, honestly. Full infantry spam with all these little nooks and crannies, all these little areas that could be open in the long run. It could be really tough for uh, Gajimata. I didn't know the Georgians had a tech tree. I thought it was just blank and then a Manaspa at the castle. That's all you need. <laughs> well, I think it's like, I think they do get gunpowder, which is relevant to this matchup. I think they do uh, get hand get cannon. cannons, get hand cannoneers, which you can actually garrison inside your super good towers and they'll fire a bunch of extra bolts that can pass through a bunch of Goth infantry. Dude, Ornlu, I've never heard you more excited to say anything in your life. You've been waiting for that, haven't you? <laughs> I think you've what been waiting for that. Like Did you hear that, guys? Did you, did you hear that? That was immediate. He was like, finally, finally, I get to say it. <laughs> Wait, so, so hold on, though. I didn't even fully listen to what you said. You said you garrison hand cannons in a tower and it fires something other than a normal projectile? It fires extra bolts because you don't have Arbalest, so your highest DPS unit for adding extra arrows to a tower is going to be the hand cannon here. And I think you can get oh, three I got it. bolts. Okay, but it's not shooting like gun powder, right? It's just arrows. Well, they're scorpion bolts, essentially. And they deal full pass-through damage, by the way. Not how, like a scorpion that how do you put damage. a dude in a tower with a gun 
and get scorpion bolts from it game. It, I mean, this it is a game sense, where anyways. five karambits and five elephants are the same uh, space in a transport ship, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it's true. That's a fair point. Uh, Ten villager lead right now for Gregory. And like we said, and like every low elo player out there has experienced the gods, if you don't kill them off, they could be incredibly strong. Uh, both these players, though, missing some pretty critical eco upgrades. We don't have horse scholar for either player. And then the, the second wood upgrade is missing for Gregory. But I, I honestly... I don't think that takes away from player skill. I think that just comes back to how hard they have to work on a map like this. Yeah, it, it is tough. You just have to defend all over the place. Clearly, these are both quite fast players. Um, the multitasking yeah. has seemed fairly good for both of them. And especially Gajamata in particular is just so precise with his unit movements, making sure that he is just eking out every little bit of value who he can with his cav. And oh, able to just dive into the TC there. Yeah, nice, nice try from Gajamata. Now, the strength of the Manaspa is when you get a big mass of them. And they get extra attack the, the greater that mass gets, but mass, not something that Gajamata has really been able to keep up. And he might be considering whether or not that's really worth it. Look how fast these guys are getting relics. We're going to have relic number three for Gregory in a second. And I remember he was fast to relics in the previous game. And now we're about to have relic number two for Gajamata. We may actually see the relics in the north. And then the very west collected. We have a very cool looking area of the map uh, in those corners. And yep, yeah, there you go. You got Gajamata wandering over to the treasures. And it uh, wouldn't surprise me if we see a monk there as well. We are going to have every single relic collected. It's wild. Uh, yeah, I mean, these guys are just so on top of things, right? I mean, as much as I made fun of you for getting chills in the last set, I mean, this is just... It is inherently exciting to watch gameplay of this level. I mean, this is why we do what we do, right? Yeah, this is, this is, yeah. Feels like, I mean, only one player gets to move on from this series. It feels like the loser of this series is going to be a big name dropping out of the round of 16. Now, what I love is how we are seeing how important water still is. And I think Gregory's going to find out the hard way. If you're trying to send villagers to the, to the mainland you're going to run directly into fire ships and demo ships if you don't have anything on water there. So nice job from Gajamata to recognize that. Now, Pikeman could help out and maybe poke some holes in the ships. And, uh, okay, who needs Navy when you've got the pointy boys? Absolutely. Easy peasy. Of course, that is a legacy back when camels were ships. Pikemen do have bonus damage against uh, anything that was formerly a, uh, a camel or a ship. A so camel. they are good against those units. <laughs> And uh, I mean, still, it... both players are expanding their eco. Yeah. Also, a couple fortified churches going up and some positions. Also noticing Gajamata immediately sending some demos to that area where the pikemen were. Again, a lot of people speculated maybe Tato. I think picking the color red when I think Tato. I think humans when I think Tato. I think new maps when I think Tato, which is what evacuation is. Uh, mule cart civilizations for Tato. Maybe someone like Doubt or something. But there go the demos. Here come the Manaspa. And this game is dead even right now. Both players still missing eco upgrades. But, I mean, the, the amount of villagers they have is just ridiculous. Okay. Clearly Red is somebody who is active with demo ships. But look at that, guys. Gregory's clicked up to the Imperial Age. Okay. Could be worse. I mean, those are just like he... That actually might not even be an even trade. <laughs> 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 that imp on the way for Gregory. Just wondering when the eco upgrade check comes in for these guys. And there it is. This is common. It's like you clicked up for the next stage, and it's like, okay, eco upgrade check. Do I have everything? And the horse collar one is a big one. More pikemen obviously going to be on the way. But look at this forward position from Gajamata. Gajamata has pretty much given up on the starting area and is dropping a one villager castle in the middle because he feels like he's going to have control there. But that's quite a few pikemen he's about to run into. Well, pikemen are getting converted. That's some solid monk control there for Gajamata, who himself is quite close to clicking up. But still, the big advantage when Imperial Age comes in is just the Halb upgrade. Getting Halb out, yep. you're going to start to overrun those fairly low Manasman numbers, which I got to say, Gregory's done a really good job of trying to minimize the Manasman numbers as much as possible, as they are such a snowball unit gaining that extra attack in larger groups. This feels like a big opportunity for Gregory to start pushing back. Yeah, look at the res collected. 
it's it's identical look <laughs> at the the relic count the idle eco count the idle tc the kd the eco kd i mean a lot of the stats that we have available here it's very close and it's 150 pop against 130 advantage gregory there but still you know manaspa quite strong the the hand cannons are possible for Gajamata, so he's definitely going to lean towards that. But now Ornlu, it's like, this is where you cannot forget as a player that there's also the starting eco. And both players have dropped the castle there, but still, it's like, there's a lot of exposed eco on both areas of the map right now. Absolutely. The conversions are going to try and force the pikemen back for the time being, but at the very least, Gregory doesn't need to take a fight until Halb comes in in around 20 seconds. So just, yeah, Manaspa attacking Barracks, you're not too worried about that. Once Halb come in, comes in, you are just going to be lighting up that production tab. And it is going to be tough for Gajamata to keep this fight going. And that's why he's even building his other castle back at home, I think. Yeah, it's a smart castle. I think, I think you're right. I think he recognizes that middle castle is probably not going to accomplish much. Now, new unique tech coming in here for uh, oh. Gajamata. Uh, this is um, a tech that... Ornlu is going to explain. I, I think I know what it is, but I forget the name, Ornlu. Help me out. It's called Spawn Towers. So what okay. it does is it turns your arrow... It gives your uh, most of your defensive buildings plus two attack, which is uh, always nice. But it also allows your towers to fire scorpion-like projectiles that deal pass-through damage, which, as you can imagine, you know, scorpions are good against infantry. Spawn Towers are really good at killing a bunch of goth halves. Wow, interesting. And again, with my mind being stuck on Tato... Tato is the type of guy who would maybe drop the towers. Th that is a, a big differentiator. I think some of the big talents players might be thinking of right now could do everything that Gajimata has done. Very curious to see, though, if this becomes a tower defense play or even offense. Manaspa doing Manaspa things, running in, uh, and this is what we said. There's different areas to hit, and I love how Gajimata has found these areas. Even though Halb is out, there's 50 Halbs on the field apparently for Gregory, but there's nowhere in sight here. Brilliant job there from Gajimata, but at some point, you are going to need to deal with oh. the Halbs, and that's how he does it. <laughs> Tato confirmed, dude. Tato oh. confirmed. Oh my goodness. Gajimata's not beating those Tato accusations. <laughs> 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 got Elite Manaspa in, oh. and got Chemistry coming in. I mean, you get to Manaspa Hand Cannoneer, like, there is nothing Goths do at that point. They're going to roll over and die. Just exploit the mobility of your unique unit. Run around wherever the Halbs aren't. The map is so open, it lends itself to that style of play. And right now, Gregory needs to try and force Gajimata to take a fight, and that's going to be tough to yeah. do. Look at that Lumber Camp. I mean, it's good for him that he didn't build it. That's just a sign of... You no, know, you run out of villagers, you want to send them somewhere. There's nowhere to send them anymore. On a map like Houseboat, for those that know that, sometimes players delete their TC in an area where it gets too frustrating. <laughs> I wonder if it's maybe worth it here on evacuation, but the Halbs are going to make their way through. They are running into the Castle Fire, though. And so there needs to be some siege from Gregory to be able to take these castles down. Because once the castles are out of the picture, obviously you can freely move around, but then the, the Manaspa can't be so annoying anymore. Another demo yeah. from Gajimata. Oh man, this is looking quite strong here for our red player. Yes, Gregory has the population lead, but the issue is he's not really getting anywhere in this game, right? He doesn't have as good of an army composition in the long run, and so long as Gajimata is able to protect his castles, of course his Manaspa factories, he will most likely win the game simply because he has better units and better mobility. This is crazy. Gajimata is doing a great job at pressuring all these different areas, and Gregory had been patient and waited for Trebs. We've got four or five Trebs moving out across the middle. A castle's already fallen for Gajimata, and a lot of his eco, a lot of his production buildings, a lot of his houses are still there. And that's going to be the area Gregory gets. Now, finally, I mean, the Halbs are there in defense. The Halbs could also keep advancing forward here with the Trebs for Gregory. And it's, I wonder, Gajamata must be prepping hand cannons near the uh, forward castles. So he's, he's prepping for that, but he's going to need hand cannons defensively as well right now where he started this game. I mean, not to live up to the map name, but honestly, don't you think you could evacuate your villagers uh, from the, uh, the, yeah. the starting island, just focus on the mainland and go for the hand cannon push across the front and then use the Vanaspa sort of your utility rating unit? It feels like a pretty smart I, I, way just to sort of set up that doom push that your opponent can't stop. Yeah, I agree. I think you've got to do it. 
I think you also, you know, as long as you have some hand cannons here to kind of hold the position, things should be pretty okay. But it is still eco that's exposed. It is still pressure that uh, is coming in, and it does, it wastes brain space. Uh, that it's something you have to respect and focus on, and it makes life easier for the goth player because then the goth player can go elsewhere. We've got Halbs there against monks, which is kind of interesting. Great monk control. And then we've got Halbs defending against the Manaspa here, or maybe, yeah, they're, they're going to defend. And poor loot. <laughs> what is this game? This is crazy. We've got so many things happening right now. I mean, there are seven trebuchets right now for Gregory the Seventh. Those are not messing around numbers of trebuchets. Oh, <laughs> Like, Dude, I, I love the idea of like, end? okay, I just don't want to deal with Manaspa, right? If you don't have Manaspa, yeah. Georgians aren't that great of a sieve. So if I just snipe the castles, I will have a very good <laughs> shot to win this game. But okay. Come on, Godramata, was... beat those Pato allegations, man. <laughs> <laughs> the villagers are... They, we have been told to evacuate. It is not safe here. And then those guys are like, what, what are you doing to me? Um, I'm laughing because that is where I think the Trebs will go for Gregory here in a moment. Because he is has decided, I can't push with the Trebs anymore. I think he's going to send the Trebs that way. And thankfully for him, the villagers sacrificed themselves. <laughs> oh, man. That's hilarious. Your sacrifices will not be forgotten for the greater cause. Yeah, there Gregory you go. Seven. There you go. The Trebs are definitely going that way. Those villagers were MVPs. Huh. Oh man, it is unfortunate though. Georgians don't have heavy demo ship, so the the demo potential is somewhat limited at this point. But I mean, right now we're looking at Manaspa hand cannoneer, and if we think compared to Paladin plus hand cannoneer of most civs uh, that can do, do that army composition, that's usually the uh, I am not going to lose this game sort of combo. Yeah, yeah, and and sometimes you have to think this is too expensive for me, but when you are when you have 40 on gold and it's a map that where you've got a couple relics and you've you've protected so much this i think is actually realistic to go hand cannons and manaspa combined gregory both of his units that he's making the skirms and the halps he's not spending much gold so if he takes good trades it could be good but the gold units are normally in combination with each other going to be very difficult to stop and I, I, what it took like 10 seconds of rest for gajamata to immediately move out to raid yet again Oh man, I mean, the Manaspa, it's its much cheaper than a Paladin. We do have Perfusion on the way for Gregory Seventh, which is nice, but you also have uh, a Zanari Cavalry in for Gajamata, so his Cav costs less population space. And yep. it's like Paladin, but they cost as much as a Step Lancer, or about the same. And I'm just, that is just going to be tough I'm to just, overcome. It feels quite unnatural to see eight Trebs just chilling there, you know? <laughs> I just find that so yeah. funny. I guess you might need it against the uh, against the Georgian castles, but I guess there's not many hills involved right now. Not so what do you think? How do you change still... the game right now if you're Gregory? Like, it feels like the momentum is with Gajamata, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe do you need to change anything as the Goths? Can you be comfortable in this type of a situation? Uh, I, I think it really comes down to sniping castles. There are what? four or five of them for Gajamata. Mm -hmm. If you can just take those down super deliberately, and I like the idea behind it at the very least with those eight trebuchets, but it is just going to be very difficult to take efficient fights in the long run. Good control of the skirmishers, making sure they're trying to target the hand cannons and the monks, but still, that army quality is just so high right now for Georgians. The good news is Perfusion came in for Gregory, so if he loses Halbs, he's going to immediately replenish them because of the fast production speed. He did take out one of the castles there. And I think Lajimata was thinking, I just took a great fight. Let's continue in. And then poof, all of a sudden there's more halves. And the raids from Gajimata, the main base, the starting eco didn't accomplish that much. The skirms from Gregory have whittled down some of the hand cannon numbers. And I, I could definitely see Gregory starting to push back the middle here to <laughs> just hope he never goes back across. <laughs> I hope he never tries to send those halves over. Oh my god, that's terrifying. It's just like looking at uh, like a, a narrow channel that's just filled with mines. <laughs> like, he just can't go across it, man. You're gonna blow up. <laughs> I mean, he, he's got so many halves. He's sending them, I think. He, he will eventually send units over. 
The demos are just waiting. Gajamata with Trebs now. He's got to be careful with his Trebs, though. Still thinking that with how quick the reinforcements could be from Gregory, that Gregory could defend from this. But, and again, Manaspa, Hand Cannon, Skirmisher has worked wonders. It has been very strong here. And, man, what a series here. Just Mapu, our observer, is going to have to keep a very close eye to the Halbs uh, that may advance across that shoreline. Don't worry, we will not miss that if it happens. Oh, man, but these trades are looking pretty ridiculous right now for Gajamata. The Manaspa charging on in. They have three Pierce Armor with the Elite upgrade. Uh, I mean, you're still sending in the units one by one, so that's actually very good for Gregory. That's actually but, good, yep. uh, If you can beat those Trebs, that is going to be one way you can at least hang in there for uh, our Goths player. Gregory takes the score lead. Gregory holding on. Remember, it's three to three on Relic, so that is even. Very curious on the, the amount of resources remaining on this map. Manaspa and Hand Cannon and Trebs, it's not cheap. We do have the new feature with Capture Age that will show the amount of resources collected. I'm sure we'll show that here in a moment. Uh, not collected, sorry, remaining. So there's obviously food's going to come in with farms at this point. Wood is is never going to run out, but there's under 10k gold, which I think is with what we started pretty low. Yeah, I think this map has a little bit more gold than your standard Arabia, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. Oh, and there's plenty more to take. Oh my God. Oh, this map can is us it? right there. Yeah, that. I mean, he, you're just he chilling right now as uh, Gregory. You just make halves and skirms all day, just not spend any gold I, and just try and grind this one out. I don't think he sees it. I don't think he knows. I don't I don't think he knows that gold is there. He would be on that. That is two untaken gold areas. Okay, he sees one of them. He does not see the other one. Did not get the relic. Fascinating stuff. Uh, well, yep. he's not mining so... gold right now. And if he's not mining gold, Ornlu... Maybe pure skirm from the opponent could actually push back this 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 halb skirmisher situation we have coming from Gregory. Well, I love the Trebs trying to take down the other Trebs. And I mean, Trebs are pretty inaccurate, but if you have enough rocks flying over, it'll eventually take him down. And look at that, Gajamata Ooh. is forced back. Nothing else, Gregory is an incredibly patient player. And there is a lot to be said for that when you're getting to this sort of grindy game as we're closing it on the one hour mark. I agree. Yeah, and oh man, the Halbs actually made it across. <laughs> oh, guys, that was like, that was like fifty military that was stuck on the other side. So if Gregory was able to hold with fifty of his pop space not being in position, he could maybe start to push here in a second, and those Trebs would be more than just defensive Trebs. Here it comes, and remember, there's more Halbs in queue. The Goths can go up to two hundred ten pop. It's the only Civ that can say that in a standard game, and those Trebs are going to advance forward, Ornlu. This is a real opportunity now for Gregory to finally push back these fortifications. Uh, I just want to point out that uh, you can totally get to 210 pop as Georgians. You just need to have enough cavalry units taking up less pop okay. space. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Orlu. Yes, they have a tech where 15% and it's researched. <laughs> of their cap and it's researched. Okay, that's, that's fair. Very relevant. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, you're correct. Trebs are here. Oh. Man, I thought I thought he overmade Trebs. Now I think he made the perfect amount of Trebs there. There's another demo. But I don't think these trebuchets could be stopped. Look how many. This is crazy. Castle's I gonna just go love down. This patience. Like, look how deliberate this is. You take your perfect opportunity to move out as soon as your opponent's just slightly on the back foot. You just start to come in with your eight Trebs. You just pop that castle, and there's nothing you can do to try and save that. Unbelievable. This level is insane. Trebs also went down for Gajamata. Gajamata had so much more map control, so much more gold control. And these Trebs, the MVP units of the game, remember four of them were on the other side of the map and helped take out some of the base. But Gregory has saved some of that gold for later. Gregory's mixed in some Huskarls to help against the Skirms. Earlier, I thought that full gold comp, like Hand Cannon and Manaspa would do it. Now I don't know it's realistic at all for Gajimata, and I don't know what to suggest for him. I will say that whoever Gregory is, I think they're one of the better late game players in the, the tournament. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. in early Imperial Age, late Castle Age, Gajimata was way ahead and has a way better Civ for getting into yeah. early to mid yeah. Imperial Age. And the ability that Gregory has shown to just hang in there and keep this game competitive now past the one hour mark is not something very many people can do even in this tournament. 
and and especially against whoever Gajamata is because the, yeah, the way Gajamata played against the lame is ridiculous. Uh, we we've got I think the most competitive series so far in Hidden Cup Five. So don't look away, people, because these are best of sevens. These are not best of fives, and it is going to be a long one. Uh, Hussar raids finding some kills, but when you do that against the Goths. They then get more population space for their cheap <laughs> military. So it's going to be 110 army for Gregory soon. And still these strebs continue to move forward. Also, can we take a moment to appreciate the Huskarl switch timing? Because you've been saving gold, you at least have a little bit more uh, to work with because you've been making mostly trash units as Gregory. Now that the yep. hand cannon numbers have been mostly reduced <laughs> at this point, in fact, there are no more on the map. You can just start mixing in some Huskarls and they're just going to eat the skirmishers for breakfast. And also, the Cannon Galleon edition, I think, is very smart. Yeah, I would find so the Goth player making some Dramans, actually. Like, we are really seeing everything here, Orlu. Everything that the, these players could possibly do. Looks like the Cannon Galleons have been noticed, so that may be dealt with here soon, but more buildings going down for Gajimata, more space, more ground being lost, and Gregory has gold like those two gold piles that were just chilling there he's noticed he knows about them now he's found some extra stone he's gonna poke down the ships and i am just speech well uh, you know i need to think of another word in these situations <laughs> speechless speechless saying you're speechless is one of the dumbest things in, in the yeah, american yeah. language but or english language but the american whatever, language now that's what i like for my fellow american caster yeah listen we don't need to listen to, we i realized my mistake immediately <laughs> okay <laughs> we move on from mistakes here we do not continue to talk about them but seriously man like what are we supposed to say about this performance 80 farms for gajamata that's insane but he's still dead he's got no chance not against this Gregory the Seventh guy. Gregory the Seventh is honestly, this has been, and I've casted all the games too, one of, if not the most impressive single game performance I've seen. Because Gregory the yeah, Seventh was yeah. in an awful position, and it took having yeah. the exact right units at the exact right time, and then making that, those switches at the end and just hanging in there to try and make this comeback happen. Yeah, absolutely. And so again, from the player perspective, you know the 16 players that are in the main event. You know it, it could be anybody. It doesn't matter what your performances were in other tournaments. You could face whoever you would consider to be your biggest rival or the biggest name in the first round. And I think both players fully recognize the situation right here. Because as I'm saying this, right, Gajamata <laughs> refuses to quit. There's only one trip now. There used to be eight. Oh, His population man. is at 180 himself. And he is not dead yet, Ornlu. He is actually holding. It felt inevitable that he would die. And here we are again. <laughs> Jeez, man. These are some good AOE2 players. You got Hussar, plus you have Elite Skirmisher. At this point in the game, resources collected are very heavily in favor of Gajamata. Yes, I know Gregory has cheaper units. But still, you, with those uh, fortified churches in the late game, your farming eco is ridiculous, your lumber camp eco is ridiculous, and with three relics, you absolutely have the tools you need to force this back. And I think Gregory the Seventh might need to have more forward production if he wants to keep this push going. Okay, so trigger warning, viewers at home, you know we, we really care about you and your emotions. You may want to look away if you have ever had Huskarls running through your eco. Um, <laughs> this is about this is about to to bring up some poor memories here for you because uh, at this point, Gregory has enough gold banked, and it's purely Skirm and Hussar, and the Huskarls have started to be spammed. They produce almost instantly. They will deal with the Skirm threat, that's for sure, and they will get into that farming eco if there isn't a castle anymore. And so, as good as that hold was from Gajamata, if the Goth player has gold for Huskarls and Halbs, I really fear for Gajamata's long term here, Orlu. Oh, and look at that. We got the long term trio coming in a two man saw, crop rotation, and guilds. Gajamata actually <laughs> had the presence of mind to get those much earlier in Imperial Age, but Gregory getting themselves prepped up for the long game, and it just. Again, you can only go for the Huskarls at this point because you were saving so much gold uh, earlier on when you were going for just trash units. Now that yep. Gajamata has run quite low on gold, he's just making Hussar and Skirm, which he's making fantastic use of in terms of his movement. But still, you only have so many gold units you can play with at this point. 
Yeah, I agree. It's just this game just continues to be insane. Now, it's funny to me how we are seeing farms happen on the starting area. Um, players are actually raiding each other and chopping trees on the starting island. Like, that is normally the island players do not focus on. But I am seeing movement there. I know players have focused there, but the main focus, obviously, is right here. And once it's like 30 Huskarls and 30 Halbs, it has to be hand cannons. Skirms can no longer contribute much. And in order to make hand cannons, you need to get gold. So Gajamata is selling off some food, selling off some uh, wood for gold. I think if it gets to maybe 30 hand cannons, Ornlu, I think I could be happy with the uh, situation again for Gajamata. Well, that's what he had earlier, and Gregory the Seventh was still able to beat it out without uh, without any uh, Huskarls. But right now, the castles, there are only two of them. They're all, uh, one of them is pretty low in HP. I love the repairs coming in for Gajamata. A lot of attention to detail from both of these players. But right now, something I'd really like to see from uh, Gregory is just more forward production. Because those goth units, yeah. they train super quickly, but they're still foot soldiers, so they need time to get out across the map. Yeah, I agree. A couple couple siege weapons as well mixed in that looks like bomber cannons is going to be the answer. I think what would help with the forward production is, a, is also a castle in this region. He's banking up some stone for that. I think he'll do that. And, uh, well... Man, I just got to say again, it's like every time we look at that crossing, Gajamata is sitting there with something, which is so impressive. <laughs> There's the castle. That is more aggressive than I expected. And a cow has died to the bomber no! cannon. I, I was tempted to bring up the cow, but I thought, no, this is a pretty unprofessional cast. Maybe I shouldn't, but uh, oh. oh my god. Oh, uh, well... Some more Hussar raids coming in. There are 37 Hussars in the queue right now. Gregory's own production is actually looking fairly limited, especially for being Goths, but the castle has been established. And now we need to see Gajamata switch back into Trebs. But if you're making Trebs, those are quite gold expensive. Then it's going to be tough to make more hand cannoneers. I, the raids, man. The raids. Gajamata's killed 190 villagers from his opponent. He's finding a way. It is really impressive. He's always finding villager picks. I wouldn't mind seeing Gregory... Even just palisade walling. Like, gods don't get stonewall, right? But <laughs> I think palisade walling to at least funnel some of these attacks in towards your castles and your TCs would be really helpful. My goodness. Oh, boy. Then this is only game two in a best of seven, in our second best of seven of the day. And <laughs> more hustlers trying to run around. And right now, Gregory this is does what I mean, right? run all over the place with his units. Yeah, this is so good. Yeah, like right right there, that area there, if there's a wall, it's less of a, a, a stressor. And now, like this, Gajamata is using that raid as a distraction to then find a moment to run in and snipe uh, the Trebs, possibly. So I think that would be a really smart area to focus on if you're Gregory. But his castle that he built very far forward here... I think uncharacteristic of what we have seen from Gregory. I, I expected a more patient castle. This castle, I think he expected more from. Yeah, I think that maybe there wasn't enough siege initially to accompany the uh, the castle, so he couldn't actually start pushing down his opponent's buildings as much as he would like, especially since Gajamata yeah. is doing a great job of pulling at least a decent number of his opponent's population back towards home wow. with the Hussar raids. because. You just need to deal with that. You can't rely on defensive structures. And of course, we have good monk control at the hour and 15 minute mark of this game. Yeah, he just ri just happens to convert a bombard cannon at the perfect moment there. Jeez. Okay, I mean, who wins this game? <laughs> this is the longest game so far Us. in Hidden Go 5. Who wins? <laughs> Us, everyone watching this game. I mean, anyone who's I mean, like, getting introduced to competitive AOE 2 with this series, man, like, this is uh, an absolute treat. Yeah, dream of a game. Dream of a game from the, since the start, right? The start has had every, mm -hmm. it brought us everything. The mid game had so many different elements and talking points. Wow, massive, massive battle here, where I think it's important to remind you that the gold units died for Gregory. The Huskarls disappeared there, and the hand cannon mass that Gajimata has seems to be big enough to hold against the Huskarls. And now, I'm, I'm beginning to think that Gajamata, even though he doesn't have that relic, even though he's not mining that gold, maybe he could play this until there is no gold remaining. And maybe this combination of, of hand cannons and hussars could actually win the game for him. Yeah, and anyone who's played like 
a lot of post-imp AoE2 knows that having the gold ranged unit versus the gold melee unit is just absolutely essential. And a lot of this mm -hmm. is just by nature of the civs right now, the way that the, the units match up against each other. But if you could keep those hand cannons alive, which is easier because they're obviously ranged units, that will allow you to even grind down the cheapness of the goth army. Yeah. Oh my goodness. How many people watching right now who voted that it was Hera in the very first series of Hidden Cup 5 are maybe considering that Gajimata or Gregory could be someone like Hera. Hera, the winner of Hidden Cup 4, one of the favorites here for this Hidden Cup. And you've also got Tata, then you've also got Viper. Okay, we got some people saying no. Interesting that people are saying no. Maybe they're they're locked on someone else here, Orlu, but people are sticking with their guests so far. But if there's I anything I can expect, it's consistency from Twitch chat. That hallmark of <laughs> reasoning, logic, and measured comments. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's tough when you've got, you know, everybody watching bits and pieces here or there. And yeah. <laughs> very easy for them to change their minds. If we make a mistake, like, I don't know, saying American instead of English, people <laughs> will clip it and it will be shared and jokes will be made. Uh, that's not necessarily <laughs> the same for the... Twitch chatters out there. Uh, I don't know what the what dance that Huskarl Hussar was doing, but that was clip worthy. And we we've got 200 pop for both. The uh, cannon galleon's gonna get poked down by Halbs just as everyone expected, and this game continues on. What a grind! You know, I, I know some people don't like this sort of game, but I absolutely love it. It's just so strategic. Both players have to be feeling pretty tired. They've been pushed to the limit. This hasn't been a very passive game. I mean, it's been yeah. constant action from Dark Age with the forward villagers from Gregory. And right now it's just about who can just keep that going a little bit longer to just grind down their opponent. Yeah, I think there's a key in these games that, and it's very rare that it gets talked about. Um... Or I think you're like me. I think your win rate as a player goes up the longer the game goes. Is that correct? Uh, my average game time, I think, is over an hour long. So, yes. <laughs> okay. So, we... All right. So, we've got late game strategists here in the casting booth. So, yeah, the, yeah. I think at a certain point when gold is limited, trying to siege push down a position against the really good players could sometimes be a mistake. And I think you're actually... And Gajamata's doing this. Gregory's trying to do this. Your, your goal actually is to... You know... Thousands of units are going to die, but I think you want to just get some random halbs and some random hussars, I guess in Gajimata's case, into the eco, right? And then you wait, and once their eco has been been damaged enough where they need a recovery period, then you try and go in with the siege. And that seems to be exactly what Gajimata is happy to do. He's just like, okay, we're sending in the hussars. If they die, I could just make more. Look, I mean, on your screen, you've got like two separate groups just just zooming right past, just passing. And I think you, this is the right approach. I do wonder, though, if the composition, the additional relic, the additional gold that Gregory has is, is going to make all the difference here. Well, the one thing that can be said for Gajamata is he's spamming a lot of Hussars, and Hussars don't cost wood. So at the end yep. of the day, if you're like really leaning into the long run where it is a wood game, you are going to be more wood efficient at the end of the day. You've also had crop rotation longer. Which, of course, yep. only the 10,000 IQ players get crop rotation as soon as they hit Imperial Age, which is exactly what Kajamata did. But right now, <laughs> there is a big army on his doorstep. <laughs> oh, man, and the, and the Trebs. The Trebs get taken out there. That's expensive. Three Relics is not going to be enough to work with uh, to, to bring you more Trebs. Also, Hand Cannons got whittled down by the Skirms. Great job there from Gregory. Great fight, actually, for Kajamata after this, as he does clear out a lot of the Skirms. But Gregory won't complain about that. 110 villagers for him. Interesting that he is queuing up two archers. So obviously that's a misclick. It's not something you see every day. Man, Maybe you just thought it, that this game is not going to end anytime cast. soon. That's exactly what he did. Cav archers as well. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So uh, can we see how much wood is left on the map? Can we get a zoom out situation maybe? and uh, use the new feature to see how many resources are left. I know we've got plenty, but I actually think it's worth considering. It looks like most of the trees are right there towards the battle, and Gregory's actually chopping wood in, in the battle area, so this is definitely a relevant thing to be talking about. 
Yeah, it's not just how much wood there is left, but where that wood is located. Because if you're yeah. running out of wood in your base, then you're sort of forced to go forward. You're forced to take better engagements. But that is also where it's going to be nice for Gajamata because his army is wood efficient, at least more so than Gregory's yes. is. Yeah, wood efficient, but at the same time, the army is like going to just get torn to shreds if it gets anywhere near the halbs. I like this from Gregory. He, he's like, all right, I'm sick of chasing you. Go ahead, run into my eco. I want that castle. It's been a long time since we've seen this attempt. The last time he ended up almost killing that castle. Seems like the defense will happen there. There are the trebs from Gregory. 90 army. It's skirms and it's halbs. The occasional huskarl. The castle will fall, which means that 100 farm farm eco for Gajamata is exposed for the potential raids. Gajamata. Has a 200 pop, but he doesn't have an answer to this right now, Orlu. Okay. Feel free to say this is dumb, but what would do you think of just having 10 vills garrisoned in a fortified church? Because you do get that plus two attack from spawn towers, so it's going to be plus six attack at this point. Um... Is it worth, do you think, the 10 pop? Especially that fortified church on the front lines. It's... It's slightly dumb. And I want you to remember okay. that I put slightly in front of my dumb the next time you have an opportunity to make fun of me. I just, <laughs> you know, it, it's just like, it doesn't feel like it's going to have as much. Like, I don't know if you should be thinking about it really as a player. You really should be spamming farms, uh, adding more vills, and getting them to work. But I mean, he might need to change something here because he's losing ground. Yeah. So... You know, that could be an idea. So I, I don't hate where your brain is at there, Ornlu, but like I said, ever so slightly, probably not something that's worth the player's focus <laughs> this time as Huskarls now run in here and start to raid the farms and Gregory finally chipping away. Gajamata, he, he's unable to kill the Trebs. The Trebs still taking out his buildings. Villagers are going down everywhere. We've had almost 400 villagers killed in this game in total. Two and a half thousand lives have been lost in the actual battles. But it, it does feel like Gregory's finally going to be able to get the job done with more Huskarls finally on the way. Absolutely. Those are the four production buildings I was looking at before. You're just sniping those important buildings, castles, town centers. Those sorts of things are your win condition once you get to this stage of the game. And it's just this relentless pressure from Gregory. It was kind of like a big tug of war on the mainland on this map. Yeah, it was looking yeah. good for Gajamata, but just able to hang in there was Gregory. And I think that those eight trebuchets and how they were used in that sort of mid-imperial age time was absolutely the deciding point in this of this game, if indeed Gregory wins. Agreed. Well, you know, right now, you're, you're absolutely right, but the big deal here is that there's no castles to defend from raids. There's one single castle for Gajamata, and that is it, which means he is so exposed in other areas... So I think even without Gregory making siege at this point, that's actually kind of a big deal losing those relics. Yeah, that's but cute. I think, I think um, you know, even without siege at this point, you should in theory be able to get halbs and huskarls into the the farming eco, and even if the villagers can be saved inside the TC, you're still garrisoning villagers constantly. It, it's a real pain. The skirms there are going to try their best to focus down some hand cannons. Ajamada's going to fight. Maybe it's wrong of me to feel like it's inevitable now, but this is a whole lot of wood and and just land control for Gregory with four castles on the map. Yeah, that is. it's still looking, I think, much better for Gregory. He, does, he is, uh, by the looks of things, reclaiming those relics, which is very smart. And so long as he can keep this forward pressure, Gajamata is eventually just going to run out of wood. Yeah, he, he will. Um, but there's no gold to mine anymore for Gregory. And the Huskarls did die to some of the hand cannons. I mean, what what a foolish move for me to think that with, okay, 600 gold remaining. That's actually being mined by Gajamata somewhere? Is that in the middle? Is that in the, the cracked terrain in the middle? I think it... I think, <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> I think it is. Oh, it's man. two tiles. It's two tiles. Yeah, I remember yeah. it next to a cliff. It's definitely on a cliff. It's on a cliff. Look for the cliff. Look for my friend Cliff. It's there somewhere. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> it, it, that 600 gold could mean quite a few hand cannons. There. There. Well, we saw it. Oh, okay. Map still looking. <laughs> it's fine. That's a big deal, though. 600 oh, gold. Oh, man. 
th this is just an absolute grind fest of a game. And at least thankfully for Rex, because I'm sure the players would need a break after this one, regardless of who wins. There you go. There is that little bit of gold left um, that is being taken by Gajamata. He still has 13 hand cannoneers. So if you are Gregory the Seventh at this point, focusing down those hand cannoneers, which are more or less irreplaceable, it is going to be one of those ways that you can continue this push going forward as we are now well past an hour and a half. <laughs> Seriously. And this isn't like, this isn't an hour and a half game where it started with stone walls, right? Nope. <laughs> this is an hour and a half game where we had laming starting three minutes in. This has been continuous. This has been constant. This has been unreal. And Gajamata is not finished. And Gajamata may still win this game. Gajamata just crossed the 300 villager kill mark. 300 oh, man. in a 200 population game. You can never have more than two. Well, 210. <laughs> or, or whatever. Nice technically, there. that could be. What, what, what would that be with the Georgians if you had like Max Hussar and no Villas? Whatever that would be. But uh, uh, well, plus 15 percent or 0.85 two, times 200 plus the difference 30. of that. I don't know. I never got past anyway. Calc, man. <laughs> I think it's 230, but I'll let my chat decide. Yeah, wow, 230. Fast fire okay. now. Of course. So I picked the wrong... Why aren't you expecting the Goth fast fire ship at the 1 hour 36 minute mark? Like, Dude, uh. I'm concerned. I'm concerned making <laughs> ships is a mistake. <laughs> look, look at that Huskar <laughs> trotting into the edge of the map. He's like, get me out of here. I know I have no chance. Oh, man. Oh, okay, man. we have a trap from Gregory. And that trap is going to try and take out these fortified churches, which... We've mentioned before, but we should restate, it does increase the worker efficiency around it. And it is also just an annoying structure that you have to prioritize taking out when pushing a Georgian base. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It, it's a big buff to your eco because there aren't that many eco bonuses that really apply in a game like this, you know, way, way into the, into the late game. But the Fortified Church is absolutely one of them. You essentially get a free 10% uh, faster working farmers. Whatever lumberjacks you have uh, left are going to be working faster. So taking those buildings down is going to be quite helpful. Crazy stuff. I mean, Gajamata took losses and he's still at 93 farms. <laughs> 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 I mean... This is ridiculous. We've got Galleon upgrade coming in for Gregory. And also, <laughs> he is making Dramans. He is going to switch onto the water here to try and hit water from the side. And uh-oh. Uh-oh. We've got a tree problem here for Gajamata. What's the Mata? He's running out of wood. That's the Mata. This is bad. He's losing Lumberjacks Mata, there. Mata, Mata. <laughs> this, this... I, I, I don't want to say it. Because I said it before, but it does feel like Gregory can outlast Gajamata and is slowly wearing him down. Uh, it, it does feel like just for the past, I don't know, 40 minutes or so game time, it has been this, this slow but inevitable push towards victory for Gregory. I mean, I think that if Gajamata were actually anything less than a top five player, and I'm pretty convinced Gajamata is a top five player at this point, I think they would have lost a long time ago. And okay. the fact that he was still able to keep things back uh, going, I I really think that even just keeping things alive for this long against the Goth spam is really impressive. Okay, so Gajimata's top five. Does that mean Gregory's top five in your mind? I think they could be, if not top five, close to a top five late game player at the very least. Hmm, interesting. Okay. If you had to guess their identities right now, what would you say? Hmm... Tato versus Yo. Tato versus Yo. I mean, I, I don't hate it. I could also see Tato Viper. Yep. I could also see like a Hera Vinchester, Hera Viper yep. type of a situation. Uh, you know, Vinch is one that, that has some qualities. I think you never know if he's going to bring it every time. Yeah. But yeah, I, I definitely could see it. Now, I also think in this particular Hidden Cup, we had nine people come through the qualifiers. I think Hart is playing like an absolute god right now. Could Hart maybe have the some Gajamata traits? Sebastian, maybe. Maybe someone like Mihai? I could see Mihai being Gregory with his patience. But a lot of people think well, Mihai, Mihai played I'm pretty sure was Jean the other day. Yeah, well, we'll have time to talk about that. Gajamata, yeah. 85 farms now. We have... <laughs> 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 that, 
I mean, that, that's that's pretty much. That's what, a live look at a T ninety and I right now, yeah, chat. That's pretty much what the casting booth looks like right now as we try and yeah. figure out the stats and how much wood is remaining on the map. We only have twenty six thousand wood on a map that started with well over a hundred k. Every tree matters. <laughs> And every ship matters, and that fire ship actually converted, and it's gonna kill two Dramans! <laughs> it could kill all the Dramans! Are you it kidding me, Gajamata? What? I mean, That's how many people have that sort of presence of mind at this point in a game? Like, yep. that is actually ridiculous, and it's gonna save those stables, which is actually really important because that's one of the only things that is keeping Gajamata in this game, is the fact that you can pull the halves in different directions. Okay. Okay, though, can we see the Fog of War from Gregory? Gregory needs to forget about raiding everything but the wood. Because there's a lot of villagers that just got pulled over to the mule carts right next to the wood there for Gajamata. And that, yeah, oh, he's going go. directly there. That is your sign. You're like, jackpot, baby. I've been waiting for this. And all the mules and all the villagers are going to run. You just never leave that area, Ornlu. And eventually, Gajamata will not have the wood to reseed farms anymore. And that is spoken like somebody who knows how to play those grindy games on ladder, man. <laughs> Just camp the wood lines. That's all you need to do. Eventually, their farms will run out. Yeah. Yeah, and it's sometimes... You, know, you notice they haven't spent their gold on siege, really. Sometimes, you mm -hmm. just have to recognize, I'm not going to break the opponent. This is just a, a long-term starvation game. And I think Gregory realized that. Now, he did make the Dramans, which we'll see if he ever makes one again. He's probably really upset he lost them. He's got to kill those Vils, man. Like, everything... I think here is where a batch of Huskarls could be really good. There's not many hand cannons. So Huskarls come out again, and he just queued up 20 of them. And then I think maybe the villagers might not be around much longer. Yeah, I mean, the rel the gold situation at this point in the game is actually not bad. If you're looking at, like, a regular game, three relics is usually enough to have a decent shot in post, post, post imp. But goths in particular, they just don't need that much gold to succeed. Huskarls are relatively Ooh. cheap at this point, and right now, that's a lot of lumberjacks and a lot of danger. Yeah, also, that fortified church that's on fire is firing quite a few projectiles, to your point from earlier. So that's not bad. He's also making another one. I also think I heard a boar die here at some point. So yeah, maybe garrisoning the fortified church here makes sense to try and you know, keep everything alive here. Gosh, really? I thought that 71 was only farms. slightly dumb. <laughs> well, it's less dumb now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it, so long it, as we're listen, working it, towards the direction of smart, I'll take whatever I can get. Yeah, listen, everyone knows it's it's not the it's not the statement, it's the timing, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, you know, I, I would I would say that it's it's pretty relevant when those are the only trees you've got remaining and Gajamata's still holding, but and he still has more vills, dude. Like, uh, this is ridiculous, man. Oh, yeah. This is the longest game of the tournament so far, I'm pretty sure. And, and if it's uh, not the longest game in the entire tournament, I'd be very surprised. Because this uh, this is, this is might hit two hours at this point. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, I, I do think Gregory's still much more likely to win. But is he going to win in the next 12 minutes game time? Uh, that seems a little unlikely. At least he has that yeah. cow for an extra 140-something food uh, with decay. <laughs> yeah, honestly, start start taking the cows, start start doing what you can. Also, instinctively, players, when they need to take a new resource, they will build a new mule cart. Stop. You got to save all the mule carts, and you have to bring them where they need to be at this point. Don't be building new ones and spending resources on that. Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. Like, every little bit of resource you can eke out is absolutely critical. There's another trebuchet that's finally out and going to start to go after, um, probably those mule carts and fortified churches. You're just trying to gather all the little bit of extra resources you can around <clears> the <throat> edges of the map. And even some fishing ships. Uh, I mean, fish traps are more wood efficient than even crop rotation farms. So, yeah. Just try and keep that alive. I just... I really... The fortified church is annoying. Like, I... Great job for Gajamata <laughs> to use it, right? You got to use the tools you have at your disposal. That is a Treb that has to take out a church that shoots arrows that also increases work rate. Like, that is that is just annoying, And it also right? doesn't cost stone. <laughs> it also doesn't cost any stone, exactly. You could just, you know, spam them. 
And I think it's it's given Gajimata a really decent shot to somehow stay alive in the situation. And look what he's finding with his Hussars. He's killing Lumberjacks. And Halbs and Skirms cost wood, as we established. The Hussars do not. So it, it, it's very dangerous right now to drop below 100 villagers, I think, if you are Gregory. And hold on a second. Villagers, maybe? Go ahead and get picked off. Like, is there a chance that Gregory loses too much economy and actually gets killed off himself here? Well, like I said a long time ago, if nothing else, Gajamata's army is more wood efficient than his opponents. Yeah, As yeah. those halves and skirms, although not much of a wood cost, it still has a wood cost. And yeah. if you look at the wood bank, it's actually fairly low at this point for Gregory, even if he has plenty of farms. And they can see right now, Gregory's thinking along the same lines because he's starting to get those scout techs. Yeah, pretty smart. I like it. I love how creative Gajamata's had to be. Gajamata has almost killed 400 vils. If Gajamata loses this game, killing over 400 villagers, I, I, will, I don't know if I've ever seen that in a 1v1 before. 400 villager uh, kills. I, I suppose it would be like in a game where both players killed 400. Maybe that's happened. Yeah, but I don't think I've ever seen so much that big of a discrepancy yeah, in yeah. a game that someone lost, right? Well, I mean, Bills go down there. It almost looked like a Vill was deleted there for a second. I could be wrong. We might have just missed it. Bills going down here as well. Gregory just crossed 200 villager kills. Light Cav Tech coming in. A lot of people forget that Goths do get Hussar. And uh, here we go. One hour and 47 minutes was the longest game in Hidden Cup 4. So we have now passed the longest game in Hidden Cup. I don't know. I think there was a two-hour banger in Hidden Cup 2, but that was so many years ago. I seem to remember uh, something like that. I think it was a maybe Chinese Aztecs game or something, but this is... Uh, yeah, that's Oh, no, familiar. there was Hidden Cup 3. Hidden Cup 3 had a Khmer War between Dogao and MBL, which was unbelievable. Oh, I remember was, that game. That was like round of eight, right? It was like right. It was on it was, hideout, I think. It was round of eight. We did four best of five quarterfinals on the same day, and the day was thirteen and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. Because every yep. series went to the fifth game, and the final one was like a three-hour Khmer War where they ran out of wood on hideout. So uh, we we changed the format for this hidden cup to do two best of sevens a day because we knew this could happen. And I want to have some type of a voice come the final. But my God, I mean, this is crazy. Look how desperate they are for wood right now. This is crazy <laughs> desperation time. This, they're both, their pop is both dropping at the same time. I'm just looking at unit Q right now to see what the situation is. But this is the great fight for trees. There was less than 10,000 wood on the map. What is this? Oh, man. I mean, at this point, it's going to come down to then the light cab spam, which I guess Gajamata does do better. And maybe you can try and stall things out with the HP regeneration you get. Just try and kill a few <laughs> units hit there and run away. <laughs> get and <laughs> run. Go attack. Come back. Go attack. Come back. <laughs> I mean, at this point, we, we, we pretty much got like two areas with trees. You got an area here on screen where the hand cannons are arriving to. So that needs to be dealt with by Gajamata. And then uh, not too far away from this, next to the other fortified church, we have the other trees. That's pretty much it. There may be some random trees out there. But folks, this is wild. Oh, God, that is so important. Oh, God, there's a Huskarl camping that tree. <laughs> that Huskarl is camping that tree. He was told. Oh, he was told 20 years ago, sir, do not leave your post. You will be important <laughs> to the cause. And he's been extremely bored. And he is there. And actually, Gregory is going to go chop those trees as well. Oh, my God. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Also, I was trying to run in and snipe the trebuchet. There is one castle left here for Gajamata. Unfortunately, his food count is looking a little bit lower. He only has six units in the queue. Gregory has around 75 or so. Some of those are villagers, sure. But, I mean, at this point, a Hussar is not worth a villager <laughs> if it's a one-to-one -one trade. A Hussars are more yeah, expensive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if, like, it'll get to the point where players are long distance taking some of the extra berries. Like, you certainly don't want to place a mill on berries. I don't know if that's worth it. No, but, no. wow, man. Every ship is so valuable. That costs wood. I, I really think right now the hand cannon mass from Gajamata is the most critical thing because he can only make Hussars otherwise. His skirms won't be a fact too much of a factor anymore. 
And so he needs to make sure that there's something out there that could deal with the uh, the halbs that will kill his hussars. And speaking of hussars, going to the wood line, Gregory's going to lose like 20 bills here, but he is taking the trees. Yeah, so long as your may... opponent doesn't get the wood, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. It's a good point. This game's insane. We are about to cross the two hour mark. Everyone, when we hit the two hour mark, do me a favor. Just say I was here. That's yeah. excluding us, Orlu. We are obviously here. <laughs> are you sure about that? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be here. This, if this gets to game seven, I might, I might hand it off. Oh my goodness. What a game. And we're still not finished. Both players down to 140 pop. We do cross the two hour mark. The vill count for Gregory is horrible. He's down to 67 vills. Oh man. 67 villagers. So many hostile This is actually going to be. We shouldn't call this evacuation. We could, should call this starvation. <laughs> well, dude, okay, Ornlu, what you said before about saving your hussars is so critical right now. If you're going to take a bad fight, honestly, back away to that only castle you have if you're Gajamata, and you just got to wait it out and heal back up. What in the world? I, oh, boy. Now, that is still I'm 77 army. Now 80 for Gregory, but if they can't attack the castles and you can't really fight well enough under the TC, there... how much is that going to matter? Is there a... Someone earlier said, T90, is there a stalemate rule? And I was going to respond, like, D uh, of course not. But the more I think about this, like, this could get very campy. It may actually get to a point where if a player attacks, they're at a disadvantage because they're taking a risk. What in uh, the world? It, it's still, I mean, there's only a one relic difference though, right? I mean, they do have infinite yeah, resources yeah, yeah. via the relics, but it might not be enough of a difference to ever encourage any amount of fighting. But these games were played several days ago, right? So whatever happened has already happened, right? Yeah, I mean, I haven't been told, obviously I'm told nothing about the matches. Uh, the rounds are played before they're covered. That is true. I mean, what, the, the Trebs, the farms, uh, the villagers, everything's so important right now. So much more important than earlier. We've crossed 3,000 total. Wait, I can't do math at all. Sorry, 5,000 total kills in this game, which is also very rare. But hey, right now, I mean, we, we have less than 3,000 wood left on the map. As apparently, there's gold somewhere, too. I don't know where. I think there's a little bit left on the starting island. Okay, Halbs clearing up some of those Hussars. There's still 60 Halbs on screen right now for Gregory, who's had a massive score lead. Mapu once again is annoyed that he is a professional observer looking for gold. This is now <laughs> where's Waldo for Mapu, our observer here. <laughs> but he's doing a professional job at not finding the gold, and that's all that matters. <laughs> uh, apparently the players can't find it either. Yeah, I mean, no hmm. one's taking it. Oh, no, there are five bills on gold for Gregory. Ooh, Gregory found it. Okay. Well, <laughs> Mapu tried to click it. <laughs> the struggle. The struggle. Oh, uh, there we go. Oh, there it is. There we go. It was hiding. Uh, okay. It's all good, Mapu. It was very hard to see. Hmm. So 50 Hussars for Gajimata. 13 hand cannons. The hand cannons being the hardest thing to replenish. He has zero on wood. His wood count is is going to be a problem for reseeding farms. If I had to, if I was a betting man right now, I would say that Gregory still wins this game because Gajimata is eventually going to lose all those hand cannons, and eventually his farms just can't reseed at this point. That is what logic would tell us, but. I'm still a little concerned that you can't make any good units as Gregory without any wood. That's true. All now, your all your units cost wood. Yeah. I mean, your, your light cap don't cost wood, but with all of the the fact that your hussars lose to his hussars, and those are the things that you can theoretically sustain the longest, that doesn't really bode that well for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if I were playing this, I would be tempted to ask my opponent their population. Because I think they... They should have a gauge on how ridiculous the situation is here. 
Now, of course, if they chat to each other, they could show who they are. Uh, they could give the viewers guesses too. Uh, but as we see some wood purchase there from Gregory, like I, I would definitely have said pop at one point. Or like if they both go to 100 pop, I wonder what happens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ACCM known for his late game or for just not yep. wanting to call it quits here. And apparently uh, it is ACCM against ACCM here in Hidden Cup 5. That Treb is being protected with everything Gregory has. And that mm. mill becomes very important, actually. That's you can't this, replenish the build right now. You. <laughs> That was also, the market's actually investment. very low HP, so if that's something you snipe, and if Gaujamata doesn't have the contingency market, then yeah. that's something you would actually have to spend 175 wood to replenish, which is actually a I lot wonder, of this day. I wonder if this is it. Like, if all these Hussars die, yeah. does yeah. Gaujamata give up? It felt like that was, that was almost a final fight. He lost a lot of his hand cannons. Mule cart. Berries are certainly awkward to take. Of course, more Hussars are going to be on the way. Farm count is now down to 60. The 140 pop for Gajamata, but in these types of games, you assume your opponent's population could be awkward as well. Ridiculous game. There's boars and deer out there, which might be worth taking at some point, but still not happening. And, and this guy this guy is still seeding farms, or, or at least sending new villagers to vacant farms. That's probably more like it. Yeah. We have less than a thousand wood. <laughs> oh boy! What? How often do we get to say that there's more food left on the map than wood? <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> what? And I mean, even the there's fishing ships traveling really long distances to get the food that's left. There's still three fishing ships fishing away at random spots. Like <laughs> it's out there. Look at the fishing ship working. Maybe uh, one more the, fight the here when from Gajamata. Gajamata runs out of food because his uh, boar was lamed in Dark Age. <laughs> Should, if he wouldn't have been lamed, Gajamata yeah, man, it would have won all the by difference. now. It would have been a couple more Hussars. Look at the Vils are headed to the shoreline, Ornlu. The shoreline <laughs> to get to get the food. Get oh what you goodness. have, people. Get what you have. We get that it's not ideal, but everyone has to work together here. <laughs> The power of friendship 60. compels you. 102 <laughs> fills on food right now for Kajamata. He's taking the boars! <laughs> He's taking the cow! <laughs> times are hard, people! Times are hard, but when times are hard, you've just got to get what you can. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. <laughs> oh, okay, I mean... I mean both still have decent populations. Where's the, I, I, I don't want to say where's the wood actually because that's going to be hard to find at this point. <laughs> there, there's no go to last remaining tree on map toggle, uh, but we're not seeing any here. Uh, not seeing any there. Mm. There's some deer. They might be eaten soon. Yeah. They thought they were safe. There's some cows that could be good as well. I, I don't know. I, I think it was near Gajamata. But apparently it's seven full trees that no one is taking because it is 700 wood exactly. And the trebuchet and down goes the trap. was piped right there. But Why? Like at, this, at this point, both players are out of wood. So they cannot what? replenish any lost farms. And it also means that you can't replenish any lost halbs or skirms. <laughs> oh my god. I And I wonder if Gajamata might win it because of that. I, I think you're right. Okay, we need to start clicking farms, though. We need to know how much food is left on the farms. Because, uh, I, if you don't mind, Mapu, just randomly click these farms. Because these cannot be reseeded, right? So you've got, like, 50 or so farms, I'm guessing, have less than 300 food available. Oh, we got 9k food coming in from all the farms. I didn't actually realize you could double-click them. Oh, that's sick. Ooh, okay. that's a lot of food. 11k food is no joke. And so if the Gajamata halbs get got killed off... So as soon as he hit Imp, by the way. And it yeah, took Gregory yeah. a while longer. <laughs> um, I think, I think Ornlu, you, you might end up being right. That crop rotation could win the game. Let's see how this fight goes. Let's see how the halbs fare. But the halb number is going down. And the Hussar number will be above that soon. And the population for Gajamata is decent. They have the same vil count. They have the same army count but purely because 
Gregory can't make halves. The game ends and Gregory made 1,544 halves. He resigns, <laughs> recognizing that he can't afford to make halves anymore. Crop rotation and just, just, just a fight keeps Gajimata in the game. He's 10,000 score behind and he goes up 2 nil here. What did we just witness? Oh. Jeez, man. I mean, like I said a long time ago, it feels like as efficient as those goth halves are, they cost wood. It's not much wood, but Gajimata can just keep on spending Hussars. And, you know, you talk about trading gold units for trash units. This is trading food units for wood units. <laughs> and the yeah. wood units are more valuable. Crazy. I mean, I, I wanted to talk about the resources collected in general, but I think that's really it at this point. The gold collected, the gold all disappeared. So uh, here we go. We're going to sum up this game for you. I mean, the eight trebs for Gregory, I thought they won in the game, taking out all these yeah, trebs here. Oh, no, he took out trees. Oh, look at those trees. <laughs> trebs took out the trees. No. Oh, what a man, how mistake, foolish man. of us. <laughs> how foolish of us not to notice that. That might have made all the difference there. Obviously, Gregory didn't know it would turn into a tree game, but, uh, <laughs> man, I mean, he was pushing. You remember that point in the game where we said, what a fantastic job from Gregory to not be broken and to be, and to be patient when he needed to? I got to reverse that, flip that right around and say the same about Gajamata. How did Absolutely. he survive against the goth spam for that long? I mean, it, it's just, you throw enough Hussars at the problem, and it's just barely enough because your opponent isn't quite wood efficient enough. Wow, very interesting Civ matchup. So obviously, this is on the back of an unbelievable performance from Gajamata. Gajamata, if there was any stress, has got to be feeling a whole lot less, right? Because of, of how the previous game went. We've got Bay. Uh, the people will call it pants, but whatever you call it, this is a map that can also lead to late games and has led to some really good games so far in Hidden Cup. Uh, Dravidians for Gregory the Seventh has led to many people to speculate. This was the first Civilization pick from Gregory. So definitely need to win here. And we have an interesting build order, actually. We have a dock, very early dock. The Dravidians get five population space for that dock as well. But I'm not sure I l love the build or Lou, unless uh, he's going to chop those stragglers and make a fishing ship or two. Uh, I'm not sure how this is going to lab out here for him. I would like to build a lot more if there was a shorefish next to the dock that you could gather with the villager. Because yeah, then you can just yeah. sort of treat it as like an extra bit of food income early on. But it's going to be a while before you can actually afford a fishing ship. And the Phil's just going to walk back home. So right now the stock isn't doing anything other than being a big fancy house. Yeah. And and a little bit of wasted villager tide. But I think the idea for Gregory is to just walk to the... Uh, or just use the straggler trees. And you see two villagers on the straggler trees there. So this could, in theory, lead to earlier fishing ships. Which is kind of the idea. Uh, Gregory wants to make use of the... Dravidian bonus as quickly as possible here. Um, neither civilization can make knights, and every time I've seen this map, I have seen knights. So uh, how does that change how players play this here, you think? Well, it's interesting, right? Because mobility is something that we typically see a lot of on this map, whether it be knights or light cab in the late game or just running around with all your units. These are two very slow civs militarily. I mean, you're focusing on elephants and infantry and foot archers and monks and all that stuff. So if you're expanding all over to the sides of the map, it might be actually really difficult for either player to punish the other. Yeah, I can agree with you. I think there's one specific application where the knights have been strong that I think make a difference. And that is if someone goes archers against you, and then that period while they're trying to mass the archers and get the upgrades, I feel the knights can be strong. We've seen that a lot. One player goes archers, the other player goes one stable knights, pushes back the archers. Now that you can't do that, you do have elephants, but elephants are slow. They're more, they have less utility. They can easily be converted. So I would say that the, um, I would say that the lack of knights will actually play a role in, in the, how effective archers could possibly be in the long term. 
Well, you can then, of course, have to turn to the skirmishers because if, become, if it becomes an archer war, then whoever's switching to skirmishers is going to have an advantage, and Dravidians do have the better skirmishers. That said, mm -hmm. Bengalis have a far better economy than Dravidians, and if they can take it to late game, uh, Dravidians will likely struggle against a gigantic horde of elephant archers and light cab and whatnot. I really don't like this build order from the Dravidians. Like, doesn't have the wood to make a house, so it's going to get loom. Maybe loom is intended. Maybe this is maybe after loom we're going to see feudal age click. But for the first civilization pick, what I'm seeing here is just well, okay, he's going to click up. Proves me wrong a little bit. Maybe the idea for Gregory the Seventh is to go really fast feudal, dominate the water, and then we actually see the double dock fish boom happen, which some players like to do if you win the water. Well, I mean, we see that sort of thing from Mongols on this map. Uh, what I think they were banned in this set. So maybe if you found a way to make a super fast build work with Dravidians, which appears to be the case right here, you still get that yep, yep, speed yep. advantage that you're looking for without having to worry about your Civ likely being banned, because I don't think Dravidians are a Civ that many people are going to ban in this tournament. Yeah, this is actually is actually really tight build order. <laughs> you know? uh, I, yeah. I thought initially that Loom, like when I saw he was at 19 out of 20 pop, I thought that maybe Loom was forced. And uh, thank you very much, Production, for covering up Bay. Uh, on our mini map here with, with something that's not accurate at all. But um, the more I look at this, you're going to get the extra wood, which is going to give you a nice injection to be able to make the early ships. And the second dock is also very well timed. So I'm understanding this more and more from Gregory the Seventh. Yeah, and you get that extra 200 wood as soon as you hit Feudal Age. That can instantly be turned into a couple of fire ships. And yeah, you are going to be in a great spot to win water. And Gajamata himself is going to be focusing on that with his second dock incoming. Okay, so both going for similar strats. Now, the Bengalis get plus two villagers when they make it to the next stage out of their TCs. This applies for every age. Uh, their ships also regen. I don't know if the ship regen will have a massive effect. I hear the scouts engage. One player's in feudal age, so it should be better, better for Gregory. And Gregory goes a little too close here. He really wants the kill, and he gets an extra hit. Gajamata might be able to make it back to the TC here, but Gajamata is going to have fires all over him on the water here. That's a very fast demo queued up for Gregory. You'd think that if you are faster up to Feudal Age, feudal age like this, you know you're going to be ahead in water, and demos are typically what you build if you're falling behind on water because that's how you get a ton of extra value. So this yeah, is kind of interesting. I, it, it is interesting. Um, you would think that the player who's more in the defensive position would go for the demo. But hey, I mean, one fishing ship against uh, about to be zero. And now it's all about transitions. It seems like both players are really happy to, or are well aware they're going to need other sources of food income. But I wondered how this map would be played. I was worried that pretty much all the big fish boomers, like Viper is a big one. Um, Viper is probably the biggest one, actually. Maybe like Barrels, maybe... Some of the Black Forest players, uh, they, they might do this every time because they, I think the value of the water is more important in 2024 than it was in 2021, where you would run out of the salmon in the middle and then you wouldn't really think about fish trapping. Now everyone's thinking about the potential for fish traps. Absolutely. And well, that does go back to the, the 4v4 BF players. Just you can spam so many fishing ships in that those tiny little ponds. That said, unlike on something like BF, your fish are very exposed on this map because there's always guaranteed to be shallows, and that's just going to be a one-for-one -one demo trade, going to favor the guy who has more fire ships, in this case, Gregory. Yeah, and you got to be really careful now if you're Gregory because there might be another demo on the way, and we know there is, according to Capture Age. There's the demo. Gajamata was not broken in that crazy two-plus-hour game when he fell behind before, and he lands mm. another demo there. The perfect demo from Gajamata. And Gregory's got to be so frustrated right now. Like, are you kidding me? And by the way, no repair build nearby. No repair build. Oh, build. man. Oh, man. I mean, there is a demo coming out as well from Gregory, oh, but, but it doesn't it... do the same amount of damage there. I mean, it just hits the front of one fire ship, minimizing the amount of blast damage that is taking place. And now those fishing ships need to be on the run. More demos here for Red. That villager needs to be super careful. She does survive, but right now the fire ship number is now swinging back in favor of Gajamata. Wow. 
yeah. and not enough uh, repairing going on there. Is how how does Gajamata do this? Like these fights were so good for Gregory initially, and they're basically both doing the same thing, right? It's just the value from Gajamata's engagements. Now that might change in a second because Gajamata's got some weak ships. But maybe as the Bengalis, you don't worry so much about being active with weak ships when your ships are slowly regenerating. Yeah, it's just a nice little bonus. Once you win a fight, you can then just heal right back up over time. Big old walls yeah. coming in from Gajamata, making sure that, okay, I won water. Let's not make sure I lose to something silly on the land. Both players were still able to get the double bid axe upgrade, so their own economies at home are at least doing all right. Still, though, Bengali is going to be in overall a better spot uh, going forward. Yeah, res collected. Looking pretty good there for Gajamata. Gajamata walling up. Scouts. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, scouts actually passed through each other there. That was an interesting moment. And then the kill happens. And we'll see how things go as we advance forward here in this game. But right now, Gregory, if this was his number one pick, his number one build that has not been as dominant as the humans were for Gajamata to start off our series. Well, it does look like Gregory's pretty close to clicking up to Castle Age, at the very least, but with the market for Gajamata, buying some food at the market from with all of that extra gold, I mean, this is looking pretty darn clean. The KD isn't that drastically in favor of Gajamata, so maybe he, you could say he's investing a little too much into fire ships, but even, if so, it's not by that large a difference. Yeah, I, you know what's interesting? I would never make fish here because I would assume that my opponent would try and, and you know, come back on water, right? But Gajamata realized, well, he's pretty much not worth it for him anymore. He's probably not going to do it. He split up his fires here. And it's just two fishing ships. It's not that crazy, but he's played this perfectly. Now, guys, what he did there, I want to explain that for anyone who's watching out there. He split up the ships, but you don't click the dock. Because if you auto-click the dock, the second a ship comes out, your unit's just going to be attacking the dock. So you separate them. You leave them on attack stance, they will automatically attack the dock, and then if a unit appears, they'll prioritize the unit for you. So it actually is just making life easier. I see way too many people right-click there, and then, of course, they look back, and by the time they look back, all their ships are gone, or all their knights or something are gone. So, just a little, little tip. Exactly. And the reason you spread out the ships is, of course, in case there is a demo coming out of the dock, you don't want your ships all clumped up together. So, as yep. T90 is saying, you just hit stop, and then your ships will automatically attack the closest unit or building, and it, it will prioritize units over buildings. What Gregory is doing now, I am pr I am pretty certain he is only doing because he killed the scout from Gajamata. He is going for a forward, and he's dropping up barracks. This will probably be pikes. I could see this being siege. And I wonder if I wonder how much of this is Gregory's worry about the Bengali late game compared to the Dravidians. But also how much of it is how the series has gone, right? It's like, last game was a grind. This game now hasn't started off as you would have wanted. It feels like an all-in play uh, to maybe build up to momentum even. And no way. Gaja's like, I need vision out oh, here. Man. And what is he going to find? Wow. Now, ooh, ooh, that was a town ooh, bell. Did you hear that? I did. Ooh, Gajamata... Click the town bell by mistake, and we heard it. So a lot of players have that hotkey removed. Who doesn't have that hotkey unbound yet? Yeah. Oh man, I'm that that is an interesting one. I like I personally just removed it last year. <laughs> <laughs> really? Um Yeah, I'm really lazy. It it makes me feel it's it's funny to know that the pros do it are, are lazy as well. Hmm. <laughs> it wasn't intentional. Well, it is going to be a light cav plus some bugs, and that's actually a double monastery. Now, Bengalis, fantastic monks. Dravidians, they don't have redemption, but they do at least have atonement. So if you're going into a full monk war, that is something you can sort of engage in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think also this doesn't have to be your everything. I know I kind of implied that maybe for Gregory, after how the games have gone in the scoreline, that this might be an all-in push, but... Gregory is actually going to be in a really nice position to drop town centers and consider adding some eco behind. But remember, no fishing ships for Gregory. And the Bengalis, they have the monks to be able to defend in some ways. And there's no defense for Gregory because he built the barracks forward. But 
He must have actually built a barracks at home because I don't think he sent the pikes all the way home. That was really smart thinking, though, from both players. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is, I mean, this entire series has been both players doing really smart moves. Now, six fishing ships, though, plus the extra four you get as Bengalis. That is already a fairly substantial economic advantage, already around 10% ahead from resources collected is Gajamata. Redemption's yeah. going to be in, and he's even feeling safe enough to add that TC, which is pretty bold. It's wild to me. Someone said, and this is a good point. Someone said, a player who's been around a long time, because B is for build for them, and B is Bell. And uh, uh, yeah, that's a good point, but I'm pretty sure 14 out of these 16 players, if not all 16 players, <laughs> uh, are using B for build because everyone's been around yeah. for so long. <laughs> okay, big moment here, and the conversion doesn't land. Stable's almost down. The scout wants through. Again, the conversion doesn't happen. Monk goes down. The oh, scout no! goes down as well. Honestly, not a bad start here for Gregory, but don't lose your Meganel. No! No! Mm. Redemption pays off, and two Meganels go down just like that for Gregory. Oh, that hurts. And Sanctity being in is absolutely essential for Gajamod. It means you can tank a Manganel hit, and that's exactly how that monk was able to, su to survive in the first place. And now we even have a sneak third TC coming out. What? And it's amazing how unconcerned Gajamod is with all the Manganels what? and Pikemen and monks bearing down on him. What? That is sick, dude. That is... Th I mean, this feels very unnatural, right? Like, for us, it makes sense. But from the player perspective... To know that you could just sneak out there, just make a run for it right now, is wild to me. If that gets spotted, obviously it's a problem, oh. but right now, it looks like the monks have pretty much put a stop to this push, and poor Gregory the Seventh, who's had an amazing series, has probably got this sinking feeling that he's not going to be advancing if Gajimata continues to play like this. Absolutely, and with the extra armor that Bengali monks have, pikemen are only dealing one damage a hit, and now the light cav counterattack is coming in. I mean, things are really just going from bad to worse here for Gregory. There's that barracks, I think, coming up at home as well. And it's just like, where do you even go from this point? You tried to grind it out. That didn't work. You tried to uh, boom. That didn't work. And now you're trying super heavy aggression. And it's just Gajamata is so comfortable in any situation. Yep, really is. And now Gajamata can turn this into the offensive. Wow, I mean, with how high the level is... Feels hard to believe we might be headed towards a 3-0 here, but maybe some of it is Gregory's spirit being broken. Certainly, like, I know that some of the micro elements on water might have played a role. I certainly want to point out again, though, that the number one civ civilization pick was Dravidians for Gregory, and this has not looked like a number one pick type of play thus far for me. But no, I've definitely been more in the... I, I, I've always been in more in the Dravidians can be solid in some situations camp, but not the Dravidians ROP camp, which might be some of my bias showing. And also, I think Gajamata has just made, he's made everything that his opponent has done, he, no matter how strong it's been, look very, very foolish all series. Yeah, it's just everything that Gregory tries to do. It's Gajamata has that answer to it. Now, that is a nice uh, kill of the Magna, at least not losing another one right there. But you also yep. have eco upgrades coming in, fervor, just really fleshing out your eco and your tech tree. You've got 10 monks at this point. You're just setting yourself up so nicely as Gajamata. Yep, and if you're Gregory, you just got a boom. You got a boom. You have to hope your opponent doesn't have the economy. Unfortunately, from what we know, the opponent does have the economy. It is 83 villagers right now for Gajamata. 83 villagers uh, continuing to produce out of three TCs, now turning this into an offensive push. There will be monks here soon. And I think Gregory just can't believe it right now. I mean, you, you probably think about the tournament. It depends on if this was an invited player, qualifier player, but certainly you've got like a week and a half to prepare. You play your practice games, you get a feel. You're like, man, I'm in great shape. I could really make a run. And then all of a sudden into your first round, you're staring down the, down the barrel of a 3-0 without your number one sid pick, and it cannot feel good. Yeah, that is pretty darn painful. We have Light Cav now in for Gregory, but going for a bunch of Dravidian Light Cav isn't something you're gonna feel super awesome about. And just, you're already looking at such an enormous villager difference. There is less than a minute idle TC time in all of this craziness from Gajamata. Like, he is just on point. Okay, so, <clears throat> I asked you at this like the start of game number two, 
who you thought these players could be. Have your opinions changed at all on Gajamata? I still think it's Tato. I think it's okay, Tato looking it's really Tato. sharp. Tato. God, okay. Or Gregory, and, like, I, I have no idea against... on at this point. Yeah, and it's it's really hard to say like some of the other biggest names for Gregory if it's going to be three losses, right? But that is the nature of Hidden Cup. It very well could be somebody has to lose. And unfortunately, like game two was so unprecedented. It's like if this was yeah. one one and Yajimata has a big lead, then it's whatever. But oh man, this is that second game, those trees that he trebbed down accidentally. <laughs> they are all coming <laughs> back to haunt him right now. Oh, man. Woo. Well, Pike better coming it's forward. A... Manganels could get some big shots. The stone is actually creating a bit of a natural choke point. Good monk control right there for Gajamada. But Manganels aren't really going after the Pikes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that is a fight that I think could have been worse here for Gregory. In the end, the Monk Micro is good enough from Gajamada. Gajamada is going to drop a castle here. There is no oh, army, man. and the GG is called. And it is 3-0 for Gajamada. And it does not feel like Gregory VII is lacking talent, lacking skill, or anything. It just seems like Gajamada is at the top of his game. And Gajamada finds himself 3-0 up. This game doesn't really need to be summed up by much more than Gajamada won on water. And then was able to sense the push and then completely neutralize that push from Gregory. And again, the Bengalis get the extra vills. So the Bengalis got all the vill bonus and the water. And then Gaja Mata played so clean the whole way through. Three nil lead for Gaja. All right. So Hidden Forts, a map that we've seen way more than I expected in the first round. I thought that this map and evacuation would be banned a lot. So I'm happy to see that Gregory uh has been the one that really prefer this i think gajamada may have actually had hidden forts on the draft but gregory wants to go here and this is a strategy guys that we're seeing that in our test games one of our players you might know him from my videos you pudding told me could be one of the strongest strategies out there for hidden forts yes we had you pudding amongst uh like 15 to 20 players who lost in the qualifiers for this tournament and myself playing games testing games testing strats and you pudding came to me and showed me a couple wrecks and he would use lithuanians because lithuanians don't need as many villagers on food you can go for the early lumber camp and the goal is to chop through to the middle and then once you are in the middle you're able to take the rhinos but we have not seen the middle be everything we had a game earlier today ornlu where the player had like six rhinos and the other player only had two and then the player who only had their starting boars ended up winning the game which makes it fun. Absolutely. And you have that really early presence. I, I love the idea behind this for Gregory. You have the same principle that you have on uh, hybrid maps when you pick Lithuanians, right? You can send the vills to wood early on because you have that extra food padding so you can just sustain villager production longer. But instead of building the dock, it's just so you have access to that extra food in the middle early on. We saw a similar idea mm -hmm. with Hindustanis having one fewer villager on food in the first set of the day. Um, and yeah, it's just great to see players really look into that preparation. Dude, I, this makes me so happy. I like, this is what I wanted. Okay. So think about it this way. You're, you're in uh Gregory's position and you're like, oh my God, there's so much food there. I got a strat to take the middle. There's gold there too. This is great. That's not a bad thing. Right. But let's say you, you get the middle poor Gregory. The zebra is now trolling. Him. <laughs> this is, and we get a further zoom oh. in. This is exactly how Gregory's series has gone. That freaky zebra walking back. But but no, like <laughs> you take the middle, you take the rhinos, and then you get all the food, you build up all this eco. But what if your opponent never cuts through to come to the middle? How are you supposed to attack them? There's then no relics in the middle. And it, it these types of games in all the practice sessions we did were the best types of games or we we've seen onager cuts to the to try and open up areas like Oh, it could get really fun from here. Oh, for sure. I mean, there are a lot of different ways you can it can play out because you have resources on both the inside and on the outside. You still have golden yeah. stone there on the outside, so if you lose control of the middle, you can expand away. We've seen a little bit from that, I think, between the show matches and the earlier rounds of the tournament. But this is the first time I think we've seen this exact Civ matchup. So what do you yes. think about 
Okay, Lithuanians I get for the early uh, wood chopping. What do you think about Saracens for Gajamata? Well, Saracens, I'm going to say the same thing I said about the Cumans in game one. With certain players, and already based on the draft, I was leaning towards Tato <laughs> at the start. <laughs> and then I saw Cumans, and then I saw the other games. So it could be Tato. With certain players, the Saracens are just ridiculous. And um, so I, I like them. I also think the Saracen late game is underrated. People oftentimes think of the market or the crossbows or the camels with the Saracens. But you've got the crazy siege as well. They have Arbalest. They have Bombard Cannons. I mean, they have Hussar. It, it's like the Civ really has very few weaknesses in late game. So I actually think the Saracens are more well-rounded. I think the Lithuanians, from a uh, booming perspective, are the superior Civ, though. So we'll see if that ends up being the plan here for Gregory. I do think that this is actually an opportunity for Mamelukes to shine, though, because I don't honestly see how on earth Lithuanians ever kill Mamelukes. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, if you're going to run into a camel sieve, you're still not super happy as Lithuanians, but having the excellent monks, this could easily turn into a monk war. We've seen that before on this map where both players just start plopping down monasteries in the middle of the map in mid game. Yeah. So this game yep. could really go in so many different directions at this point. I wanted to see, can, can we see the wood line by Gajamata? I mean, it's supposed to, there's supposed to be quite a few areas where you can find two tiles. Um, a little late at this point, admins could have stepped in. Just like, sorry, the wood line, the cut to the middle map was confused. I want to make sure he had the option here. From the mini map, it looks like he might not have had the option to cut through. Nah, there's plenty of areas. Yeah, the players basically scout that and make a decision. We've seen instances where players do play slumber camps where they can chop through, but will eventually, like in the first series of the day. And uh, just a little bit of paranoia on my part. My apologies, folks. <laughs> but the rhinos but it does are coming raise an in interesting here point, though. That Gachamata isn't even trying to chop through the, to the middle. And I don't think we've seen yes. that yet, where players are just not even bothered trying to go to the middle whatsoever. And Gachamata saying, eh, I'll just sit in my base, man. Yep. And, and look at this. He's going for a stable. So he's going to add in some army here. And this army obviously can't go through the middle. It will go to the outside, and then Gajamata sees that it's also a stable from Gregory. I mean, as much as I want to get excited about just skipping the middle and going farms, which I think is underrated here, also, it's not bad to have, like, a thousand extra food if you're going scout rush here for Gregory. So I, I really like Gregory's position right now. I know the score line uh, can affect how positive we could be for the guy, but I think yeah. his position is actually stronger right now. Yeah, I mean, you'll take the free food when you can get it, right? And at the end of the day, Gregory should be getting a bit of a resources collected advantage, especially since Saracens don't have any sort of passive eco bonus to help them out. Of course, the market usage will almost certainly come in for Gajamata relatively soon. But it seems like for now, both players are going to wall and then probably want to take this one towards Castle Age. Okay, so I, I've been waiting for this moment. Um... At a certain point, as we see Gregory try and bring in these rhinos, nice quick walls to bring in this rhino from long distance. Uh, walking through here has to be careful. Does have loom, should be fine. Okay. Um, at a certain point, when the players get their walls down, this map kind of looks like uh, can't quite put my finger on it, but I don't know, like a, a bug or something. Like you see the walls oh, forming yeah, and yeah. the TCs. Kind of looks like a, a bug, bug wearing 3D glasses. Out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there might be there might be a uh, other way to describe it, but it's starting no, to no, fill out a little bit. It's the only way to describe it. <laughs> Gregory is expecting his opponent to cut to the middle. Do you see where their scouts are right now? The scouts oh, yeah. have gone to the middle like, all right, here we go. Let's go. And he hasn't seen any lumber camps on the middle whatsoever. And he's bringing in another <laughs> rhino. What in the world? So I love it. Something that it would be interesting to consider. Now you've obviously included the rocky terrain, so players can't wall off their opponent if they chop through first. But you yeah. can add towers, and yeah. we haven't seen it yet. But if you just start yeah. towering around the middle of the map, it could make pushing towards that center area quite tricky, and make it so that, say, Gregory could much more easily push Gajamata than Gajamata could do vice versa. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah, towers could become interesting. I actually think something like guard towers becomes really effective in later stages. Because um, if you can keep... Yes, if you build up towards the middle, it is hard to access your opponent. But you could just 
chop through to your opponent if the towers kind of prevent anything on the other side. Interesting walls here from Gajimata. It's like he wanted to go small wall, yeah. and then he decided he wants to go full wall. And now he's going full wall one side, but it's small walled on the other, and the scouts will be here eventually. So this could actually end up being problematic for him. Yeah, that is a little odd, especially because he went for the lumber camps on the outside right away. So going for the small walls, I feel like doesn't make as much sense because your wood is already going to be outside your walls. So it's going to be much more difficult to protect. Maybe he didn't think that Gregory would open with early scouts as the meta isn't very well defined on this map yet, but it feels a bit off and maybe not exactly what Gajamata wanted to do initially. Agreed. Yeah, changed his plan a little bit. Maybe surprised by the amount of scouts because of how long it took for them to get here. And, well, Gregory immediately ran away, which is a bit weird to me. He killed the Spearman. Normally, you dive after that. But he chose not to. He is on the way to Castle Age. Resources collected, though, says it's pretty much even. And, obviously, we've had the farm approach, and we have had the rhino approach. So, I, I we really need a rhino count next time. I was not expecting players to take so many. I thought they'd take, like, two from the middle and then switch to farms, but... These guys have been all over it. I think there's supposed to be 12 in the middle, actually. So eventually we could use process of elimination. But, oh, I mean, man. the wood efficiency <laughs> is certainly a problem. And then the scouts show up here, Ornlu. And Gajimata actually here with his own scouts to defend from this. Oh, that would be careful on stand ground right there. Does lose two of those scouts for free. And now Gregory is going to be chased back towards his own base. And it seems like, well... Although Gajamana did sell stone to get to Castle Age using the market as Saracens, you can just buy the stone right back if you want to take a more boom-heavy approach. Yep. Yeah, so uh, it seems like a boomy game. I would have said when we looked at all the maps at the start that Hidden Forts has the potential to go the longest. We then did then have the evacuation game, which of <laughs> course was over two hours. So uh, for their energy levels, my energy levels, and my voice this week, I'm hoping this is somewhere under two hours but i can not see much that under possible. two hours just a little bit under two hours <laughs> yeah maybe an hour <laughs> 57. <laughs> remember no relics in the middle and there's lots of gold in the middle but gregory has opted not to tc the middle so this is just completely different than what we had seen in previous games where one player takes mid and then the other player does not here we have one player taking the rhinos from mid and neither player looking to really compete for the middle at all right now well, at the very least, there are still scouts on the map for Gajamata to try and pressure the Lithuanian player who's going to try and pick up some relics. Because although, of course, camels are good against cavalry, once a Lithuanian player starts getting four relics, especially in Castle Age, I mean, those, those numbers just don't line up very well for most units out there. So I think just even if you're booming, which Gajamata's doing, he's on three TCs, it's still having some presence on the map feels quite important. Okay, so let's talk late game because it feels like we're going to go there right now. They're just competing for relics. It's it's uh, another it's a fortified clearing style game or or maybe bypass though that obviously had some differences. Um, explain to me what you try and do here with the Saracens. Are we going for Mamelukes? Are we going for Arbalest Hussar? What do you want to see from the Saracens here? I, I think it can depend a lot on how the game plays out, because if you're having a very active mid-game, the chances of you being able to develop for, towards Mamelukes feels quite limited, because you just have to keep making army, you have to rely on units that can come out of production of buildings that aren't castles. But because this game is looking to be very passive, it feels like mm -hmm. in this sort of situation, you try and keep the rush distance as long as possible, maybe, uh, just not okay. by not chopping through to the middle, and just start plopping down those castles, because I do think that Mamelukes are something of... Uh, this unit beats everything that Lithuanians make sort of unit. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder if you try and even go extended light cav play. Some players, oh god, the light cav are going to be through. Oh, the quick no. ball doesn't land for Gregory, and Gregory's going to lose a monk. <laughs> and now the light cav, well, one gets converted. Okay, that's fine. I was going to say the light cav could run through here. But, um, you know, I, I personally feel like Gajamata could be Tato. So something that he likes to do, now another player likes to do this with Behera, is adding the second stable and just extended light cap play. Second, third stable, stay in Castle Age a bit longer, and... Well, howdy-ho, my bro. <laughs> I'm just just saying, dude, like, I... The Cumans game one, the demos yeah. on EVAC, um... 
it, uh, it's not that telling because there's other players that could do this too, but I know people have been thinking about the Dorito, which is Tatito, if you didn't know that. And uh, I don't know, man. He's playing like a beast right now, whoever this guy is. Absolutely. It's one of those things that in itself wouldn't say, oh, this is Tato, but it's just sort of another uh, drop in the bucket of these are things that all together really do scream Tato at this point. And if it is, I mean, like you're saying, whoever it is, it is such a high level of play. That said, Gregory, not going to go down without a fight. Nice. And that is a dead monk. Yeah. And again, it's like if this game is dead even, it's very close. We're going to have a monk go down here. Sad times for, for Gregory. Must hurt a little bit more for Gregory, considering he is a monk, but... Maybe he's just used to it. Um, you know, if it wasn't 03 right now, we're like, holy crap, this is dead even. This is insane. There's just that knowledge that this is 03. And that worry for Gregory that the same could happen again. But I like the outpost towards the middle here, Orlo. That's really important. Yeah, that's a cute little move, especially because you know your opponent hasn't chopped through up to this point. So chances of maybe your opponent chopping through maybe later on and trying to catch you off guard, especially since Gregory himself isn't very active in trying to go towards the middle of the map. That seems mm -hmm. like something, at the very least, you have the ability to keep tabs on your opponent, so just do everything you can to make sure that you are not getting caught off guard, especially on with your yep. tournament life on the line. Yep. So I would like to see some pikes here from Gregory, and then you have to think about how you want to play the Imperial Age. I don't think Mamelukes is as exciting as Mamelukes can be, is going to be easy to get to on this map. I would actually love to see the amount of resources in total uh, stat because I think gold's insanely high. Wood's obviously going to be insanely high. Food, there's some left over. But the stone... So I, I actually don't know, Ornly, maybe you'd be the guy to ask how much stone is on a typical map. Um, but I know that the way the stone is distributed here is two tile spots, which just makes it way more awkward to build up towards castles. Uh, well, a um, typical map would probably have, what around 24 tiles of stone so 24 times 350 quick, quick math okay yeah. chat help us out 24 times 350 we're casting whatever that comes out to but yeah it definitely is uh, a thing to point out though the two tiles is just so awkward like another map that has that is it closed for example it always feels like going for the castle plays is more difficult nice kills there from Gajimata yeah. who is two relics already and might be able to get a third right now but Vil Count's still very close between these two. Um, now, this map only has five relics, right? Because I know some of the other special maps have more. But I think this one uh, just yes. has five, right? Okay. Yep. So um, if you're getting anything less than three relics at this point, that feels like a huge win for Gajamata. Because if Lithuanians aren't yep. with their most supercharged cavalry in the late game, you as a strong camel sieve are probably going to be feeling quite good. I think it could be four. Yeah, okay, so that, that Relic's on the way home right now. That would be the fourth. Gregory's going to get the kill. It'd be wild if the Relic jumped over the wood line there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you never know with DE where those Relics are going to go. Well, I think there is a point when the Relic spawn is random. Uh, way back in the day, I went through like, okay, if there's a Monk with a Relic and a Transport, then the, the Transport spot is blocked. Like, there is a point when it's actually randomly placed on the map, but I don't think we're there yet. Wondering if there's ever going to be a point where we see a lumber camp from Gajamata towards the middle, where he tries to cut towards the middle with intention. It feels like it should happen at some point. Maybe the TC. Okay, yeah, there, there he could go through the middle. Can Gregory see that area with his with his vision? He does have outposts in the middle. A pikeman upgrade very late for Gregory. I have to say for the for a player who's made so many spearmen. And he can, if he's paying attention to that, see that tree being chopped. But it's so difficult to notice when this is happening. It's interesting that you're chopping through from that angle in particular. Because at the very least, it means that unless your opponent chops through, your farms around your starting TC are going to continue to be safe. Whereas you have less of your economy, relatively speaking, especially farms which are immobile, exposed yep. to potential enemy attacks. Like, those farms right there are absolutely safe. I mean, this Gajamata player is just insane. And I think Gregory has, has stuck with him, has hung with him in many of these games in this series. And just every time, Gajamata's finding good moments, finding some villager kills there, is on the way to the Imperial Age, and is now dropping archery ranges to make a big switch into something like Arbalest. And I think having covered every game so far, 
Obviously, we're on day two still, so it's early. But right now, I just have to say, even though Gajimata hasn't won the series, it feels inevitable, and it feels like Gajimata is one of the big favorites to win all of Hidden Cup 5 right now with this, with how he's playing. Yeah, I, I think there's no question about it. Uh, like I said, the only player who seemed to be on this level is Vasco da Gama from the, the first set of the tournament. Uh, we'll have to see, of course, going forward, because I... Unless it's like really, really obvious, I don't like picking until we've at least seen everybody play. But yeah, that, at That's the so very fun. least, Gajimata's <laughs> a top five player. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. At the very least, I think top five's good. But then also, like we've seen instances within our top five where, you know, a top five player four O's, you know, four ones, other players in the top five, depending on the day. So the sky's mm -hmm. the limit, and and that's the thing. You know, it's 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 a brutal format. And poor Gregory's really feeling it right now. But it is just... You also have to just take your hats off to Gajimata for the preparation, the ability to play every single setting. And guys, I mean, Gregory hasn't clicked up to Imp yet. He just now has. Gajimata is building a second castle and will be an Imp in 40 seconds. If you were 3 0 at this point, and then you built your castle and your opponent has double castle the Trebu down, uh, I don't know if there's many people that would actually feel like... They could continue on here. I yeah, this should. is pretty painful. I I think it's really telling that neither of these civs have big economy bonuses for booming, but you still have around two thousand more resources collected for Gajamata and a two minute faster Imperial Age time, and that is just all mechanics. Just having smooth economy, making sure that your eco balance is proper, and making sure the TCs are humming, and this is just going to be a devastating timing. I also think the Rhinos are a bit overrated. I know it's like a silly thing, but those were, there were two big differences here. And this is the second game today where we've seen someone just take their starting boars, and then the other player would take like 10 Rhinos, and the res collected, the boom, with the farming play, actually ended up being superior. But I think overrated is maybe a bit extreme because it is still really helpful, and you can do a lot of different things. But just certainly something to think about. Poor Gregory, he's going to try and do something with his pikes. He can't get anywhere close to those two castles, and he will lose his own. And when he gets the pikemen over here, he's going to see not Arbalest, but Cav Archer from Gajamata, which is a really interesting choice. Yeah, and there, I would say that not all players would go Cav Archer here. Of course, Saracens have a very broad tech tree. You can do lots of different things. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not like Lithuanians can't counter Cav Archers. You do have very good skirmishers. But I think that whatever Gajamata chose to go for, it could have been Arbs, it could have been Camels. Um, this imp timing plus having a unit should be enough to close out the game. Yeah, it, the, the problem here is the pikemen are not really that helpful anymore. And there's no like side area to focus on because Gajamata's got the side area. He's also got the middle now. I love Cav Archer. Can you remind me if uh, Saracens get Parthian? I think they get every other upgrade. Yep. Uh, they get all the upgrades. They're one of the two sibs with a full archery range, the other being Japanese. Ooh. Okay, so they get fully upgraded heavy Cav Archers. Well, that's sick then. Like we said, Saracen Tech Tree. They also get fully upgraded Hussars. Yep. And they also get Siege Ram, Siege Onager, Bombard Cannon. They don't. They can't get Cavalier. I think beyond, and, and I guess Halb. But beyond that, their tech tree's just unreal. Gajamata, big score lead here. 3-0 lead. Remember, one of the games we fought to the final tree. There were seven trees remaining <laughs> on the game that if you didn't see, you were going to need to rewatch at some point. Spoilers and how it ended, of course. <laughs> yeah. uh, Gregory yeah, just going to split here with his halves and do his best here, Ornlu. But it's not looking good for him in the middle right now. No, that treb differential is pretty rough. Now, at the very least, Lithuanian Halves are the fastest in the game. They got a 1.21 move speed, I believe. And that yeah. is at least... It's still slower than Cav Archers. All, you know, infantry units are going to be slower than Cav Archers. But at least if your opponent isn't paying attention for even a moment, you try and make it maybe more of a multitasking battle, then Halves might be able to sneak in and get those big hits on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the Halves did do that. We did see some of those hits connect. And I think, like, Halb's Skirm could, in theory, be very good against this, and the Lithuanians do have that. So, certainly not seeing any Skirms right now. There, the Halbs are getting shot down. Heavy Cav Archer upgrade is in. 
It is four to one relics for Gajamata. It is 3-0 in the total score. The level has been insane. The scoreline does not even, it's not fair to Gregory in the slightest, but Gregory not ready to die quickly here. Gregory snipes two of the trebuchets. Very well played and buys them a little bit more time. Absolutely. The Cav Archer numbers are still climbing, and you're getting the Camel plus Cav Archer. You have 50 villagers on gold as Saracens, which is pretty insane. Siege Engineers coming into, and the thing is, you still have that Treb advantage. You have the map control, and it seems like Gregory is just trying to react as best he can. But if you're going to go Hald plus Cavalier, that doesn't feel like it's going to be efficient enough to deal with a fully boomed Saracens. Yeah, I think, like... The, the army count right now for Gajamata is just too strong. The map control for Gajamata is too strong. Three castles in the middle near the gold. He's got a castle in the north. He's got Cav Archers raiding there. They've got 18 kills. This castle for Gregory is the only castle that he has. And again, oh. Gregory would have hoped for more, but Gregory is 4 owed here by the beast. That is Gajamata. Gregory drops the GG well played and wishes his opponent good luck next. And man, oh man, Orin Lu, the guesses around the community, I've got to be insane <laughs> on this one because Gajamata was a beast. Felt like Gregory was a beast as well and maybe the best player to have gone down so far in Hidden Cup 5. Yeah, I think that's absolutely possible. It's just such a, it's so unfortunate that Gregory happened to run into Gajamata. I, yep. I think versus maybe the two other players that played uh, in the first set, I think Gregory would have a very strong chance against either of them. And it, it's just unfortunate, but that's how single elimination brackets work. At least it's a best of seven, so you have more chances to try and make uh, the win happen. Yeah, and let's just review the series real quick. I mean, it was a long one. It's a very long day here, and we're still not done. We got things to do. People have to vote, and we will talk about what's coming up next this week. Gregory the seventh tried to he dealt with the human play from gajamata fairly well i felt like the stone walling in the middle expanding his economy with the burgundians he gave himself the best shot but it really felt like in this game that gregory played he did everything he could do and gajamata just played it perfectly ended the game with paladin but at that point you're thinking orlu it's cumans people ban cumans a lot what about the next game and this was the game <laughs> That we are never going to forget. It started off with a lame. Uh, and not just any lame. Gregory actually killed the rhino with his scout. So there's no food there. Uh, and then led to a game that eventually ran out of trees. I don't even know how many highlights we're going to have here. But feel free to step in. <laughs> we can just keep them coming, man. We can keep them going all day long. But yeah, this is honestly the game of the tournament so far, at least in my mind. It was so close and so well fought. At times, it looked like either player had the game in their hands. But at the end of the day, Gajamata just able to slightly outgrind Goths with Hussar spam. And it seems like the, at this point, Gregory was kind of broken. Yeah, I, I think losing this game changed the whole series for Gregory and maybe influenced some of the decision making with, with strategy. Uh, because Gregory could feel like how difficult it was going to be to come back and uh, you know beat this Gajamata player four times, but I mean we are still people are like man this this game ended believe me this game didn't end anytime soon this is like the midway point right this is halftime <laughs> show um, and the game just continued on and on and on this was actually an hour later if you look near the mini map. There was just 1,200 wood remaining. We eventually ended the game with less than 1,000 wood remaining. Players were scrambling for trees. It was ridiculous. And uh, yeah, as, as you said, I think this was the game that unfortunately broke Gregory, which I could see maybe a little bit of come the final game, or sorry, game three, where like strategy didn't have a lot to it, but... Uh, then again, how much of that is just Gajamata being Gajamata here? It It's tough because when you're facing somebody whose strategy and execution is so good, it feels like everything that you do doesn't work, right? You try and take the game in a bunch of different directions, and I credit to Gregory for trying to do that, but still, at the end of the day, it felt like Gajamata just never missed a beat and was always comfortable with whatever Gregory was trying to do. 
Yeah, I agree. And, and it's unfortunate, again, Gregory tried his his defense here. Pike, like have his own siege, pretty much what you would expect at that point that he could have. Threw everything at it. Ended up clearing up the siege, but then the next step, as always, got him out of there and ready to drop a castle, which eventually ended the game. And uh, don't worry, folks, we're going to have the polls here in just a second. But yeah, this is how this game ended and then ultimately how the series ended. Gajimata, massive Cav Archer mass, eventually just pushed through the middle. And I cannot stress you enough how impressed I was with Gajimata. So we're going to get to the vote now. Uh, people who are watching here on Twitch, you'll have an option to type a number in the chat. Now, the most recent number that you type will be your vote. So if you type uh 11 for example to laugh right now as people do in age vampires uh you can override your vote if you would like to we've got the gregory the seventh vote now who do you think lost 4-0 today playing like a beast against gajimata predict away i'm seeing a lot of very talented players get voted for right now orlo well to be fair we have 16 very talented players in this tournament uh yeah but, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh to, to be fair, but I do think that the votes seem to be leaning slightly towards Vinchester, and I think that I wouldn't feel comfortable with any guess until at least I've seen everyone play. If I yeah. had to pick something right now, I think Vinchester might be the best example. Just m maybe just flubbing a few small aspects and then the goth play and just trying to grind things out in the late game, but it not quite being enough. That does feel Vinchester-esque, but okay. it, it could be anyone. Okay, maybe a Maybe a Sato? Seeing some votes fly in for Viper there. I wouldn't think Viper would get 4 0 but then again, some of the games are really close. Is Viper I don't think Viper about? would be broken even by the uh, uh, the evacuation game. Like those you don't think he'd be broken players... like, em emotionally come game three. Yeah, yeah. But Viper would pick Dravidian's first pick and have he a lot would, of. He would, absolutely. And then have it not work. Like, the Dravidians thing is making me think we might have just seen Viper lose. But it is Vinchester, according to the community. Jordan and Doubt voted right behind them. Uh, or behind him, rather. And then let's vote for the winner here, guys. I mean, they, again, there's lots of talented players in our scene. So you could see people voting for many different names here. But the community voted that Hera played in the first series. That it was Hera as Vasco da Gama. It was pretty landslidey. I think it was like 40%. Keeping that in mind, we haven't had anyone vote for like Leary or Viper or Tato really yet. We're halfway through the, the, the first round. We'll see who people think Ajimato are. But, um, you know, every Hidden Cup, we have repeats. Vote away on who you think the winner of that series was. And what is your vote, Ornlu? What are you thinking right now? Like Twitch chat, I think it is Tato. I think that the level of play is just absolutely up there. You have the strategic variety. You have picks like humans and Saracens and going for the demos with Georgians. Georgians also feel like a Tato pick. And just the fact, I think more than anything else, it was maintaining that tippy, tippy top level of play in like every single possible situation. Mm -hmm. And I agree. To me, that screams Tato. Okay. I agree with you. And there's two other names that come to mind that it could be. Viper, I actually think, is not a bad pick. Viper's won three Hidden Cups before. Viper has 4 0 many talented players before. Viper likes to play that late-game style, the late-game grind. Viper would be in conversation, possibly, with players about these mule carts and these new sieves and these strats. Uh, and then has to be Hera, 100 farms, beating a Haub player with Hussar on evacuation. I think those are the three that come to mind for me, and the level's so high for Gajamata, I'm not sure I could even tolerate any other guess. Um, though, of course, it could be. Uh, names other than that, but oof, what a performance. Yeah, I mean, I think that the level of play, Mr. Yo and Leary and Shape absolutely could be there as well. I just don't think stylistically it makes sense for either of those two. I agree. Also, an interesting side note, if you're a player who really likes Cumans, any other tournament that is always banned because they know yeah. you like it. In Hidden Cup, they can't, they don't know it's you, so they will not ban it. And then maybe, of course, they find out later how good you are with them. Tato, 64%. All right. Well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you in here only for the last segment. We have a bracket of 
the community guesses from what has happened so far. Uh, and if we have that prepared, I'd love to see it. According to the community, after the first uh, four sets of the round of 16, we have had Hera against Ganji, Jordan against Mihai, Barles against MBL, Vinchester against Hato. And what do you think? If you were to give like a percentage, what do you think the community votes has come in at here? Do you think they're close? Do you think they're far off? Um, well, I've been keeping my own guesses uh, as I've been following along, just like you. I have around half of those names the same. Um, I, I, I'm totally on board with Jordan Mihai. Um, but I think the only players I'm like super confident right now are Mihai and MBL. I think it could be multiple people for all of the other ones. Okay, crazy. Of course, there's no shame, guys, if we get it wrong, because we are making guesses and votes based on uh, half the information. We've only seen half the game so far in Hidden Cup 5, so understandable that we would have some of the details wrong. And what we do know is that the heroes uh, that have played, uh, that those are the results. We also have the upcoming matchups. Tomorrow, we're going to have King Steven against Selim the Grim, followed by Khosrow and Emperor Sigismund. And then on Wednesday, the final day of the round of 16, we'll have Alfred the Alpaca against Jan Giska. And then also Alexios Komnenos versus Robert Giscard, which is a historical matchup, by the way. We'll have information on that day about that one and who actually won. But uh, Ornlu, thank you for joining me. It was a very long series for a 4-0. And we'll have <laughs> you back. I forget the schedule, but I know we'll have you back, I believe, in two days or at some point. Uh, first series uh, Wednesday, I believe. So. Okay, perfect, man. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks again for joining. I had a great time. Of course, man. Thanks for having me on. It was a lot of fun.